So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the fifty, the first fifty pound SmackDown. I'm joined with my host, Harrison. Do you want to say hello, Harrison? You almost said good friends there, but you just referred to me as a host, a pure worker, a pure employee, a pure slave for today. <laughs> there's, there's good evening, Harrison. I'm doing well, thank you. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so fifty pound SmackDown. Fifty pounds on the line. It's in the title. I just wanted to give it back a little bit to the community. You guys sub a lot to me, so I wanted to uh, give some of that back and have some fun show matches. We could do we could do these quite regularly, relatively regularly. So hopefully this goes well. Hopefully this this is something you guys enjoy, and then we can do more of them. The first map's going to be on the dunes. We've got Kevin spawning in the north of the map in blue, and we've got Ungers spawning in the south of the map playing as Sweden. So we've got Sweden versus USA map. So this map is a brand new map. It's called Dunes the Eye. Uh, vividly Plain came up with it. It's a really cool, unique map. It's not on the competitive map pool, but it's one of the new maps. I really like it. I like the design of it. So I felt like we wanted to play this as, as, as the first map. The, all the other maps are part of the standard map pool and part of the standard competitive map pools. There is also a gentleman's agreement in here that they're not going to wall up after a certain time because, <laughs> as you can see, there could be a lot of choke points in this map. So, yeah, okay, I, I will actually, kick off. Yeah, just interesting. I actually think walls are disabled in this map. I don't think it's physically possible to build a wall. Wow, you okay, could... brilliant. I you could that. build a barracks to try and block off a choke point, but uh, yeah, the point stands. Excellent. I am actually going to disable my video because I think that looks better if it's just me and you talking about me on the screen. So let's kick off. Oh, and instantly. Okay, we need to put it in the middle. Perfect. Okay, so this looks like it's running nicely, nice and smoothly. So Kevin in the north of the map playing as USA, regarded as kind of one of the weakest weakest sieves in the game right now. I trying to think of any civilizations in supremacy that are weaker than it kind of kind of hard pushed i mean maybe russia but i think they're on the same sort of tier level usa do have some gimmicks though uh, that can that can win games well, you know definitely but uh, we'll have to see why there's definitely a plan as to why kevin's gone as usa on this map maybe his thinking is he doesn't really this this map could be a massive uh, kind of toss flip coin so um, he just wants to kind of get USA out of the way so he doesn't have to play it again. But Kevin does know lots of lots of uh, civilizations. He knows how to play almost all of them, and he knows how to play them all very competitively. So I think he's got a plan up his sleeve. What do you think, Harrison? Uh, I think it's a bit too early in the series to be saying that uh, Kevin's going to play a sieve just to throw it away. I What I will say is I'm a bit concerned here for Kevin. He is playing the United States. However, I'm with no trading post and USA being a bit of an XP um, fiend. I, I'm a bit concerned about the tempo moving forwards, but I'm sure with the many cards they have, they have a decent shipment progression. Unger's here playing Sweden. I've played against, I can't remember who I was playing. It might be Animus playing Sweden on this map. I and mean, this map is just Sweden's paradise. You'd think that having all the gold mines in the center or all the uh, regular copper mines in the center is a problem, Sweden. It's actually really good because all your torps are in one place to defend. You do not have to run around the map to try and defend your torps, like how your opponent can run around the map to try and siege your torps. It's all in one place. Good point. Get a couple of leather cannons, a couple of Carolians, just sit there, and I, I don't really know how Kevin can deal with that in H2. Yeah, because if we have a look around the edge of the map, I could see that there were some gold mines, but in actual fact, all the ones around the outside of the map, which would be very difficult to actually get to and start sieging down, they're all salt mines, and correct me if I'm wrong, Harrison, salt mines from Torps gather slower than they do normal mines. I think um, salt mines, when you're gathering with just a regular villager mining, it's like 60% uh, efficiency, so you do lose quite a bit, and naturally it would make balanced sense to have the Torps that reduction as well. First card here for Kevin, going to be French immigrants, CDBs. I think one of our players has said that the CDBs have kind of like fallen off their little meta, how they open up with USA, taking, off, taking up a bit too much time and momentum from them. Um, but you're the USA enjoyer. <laughs> I loved how you said, I'm sure USA have a couple of gimmicks up their sleeve. I'm like, uh, gimmicks, de sieve gotta be. We Have use be. the word gimmicks. We use the word gimmick. We throw that term around too loosely because in actual fact, it's just what people would refer to as gimmicks is just kind of mechanics mm. that are built into a lot of the DE sieves. However, 
generally we we both know like the north american sieves so usa and mexico they're very card heavy sieves and that's kind of their bonus compared to other sieves and there's actually no tp on this map so kevin obviously would have known that there would have been no tp on this map before he before he went into this picking usa so i wonder i wonder how that's going to he's going to take that into consideration with his build order here because it's going to be very standardized it, you're not going to get a lot of cards USA do get bonuses for XP upon aids up and there are other ways of getting extra XP But the majority of it is going to be TP So he's going to yeah. have to pull something out of the hat which is different to what you normally see Kevin, I have actually seen Kevin's USA quite a lot and he he traditionally liked to go for like the well, Chinese immigrants okay. He'd like to go for the gold trickles, but he's obviously not gonna be able to do that this game He's already gone for the French immigrants. So we'll see how that progresses He's mining a lot of gold here, so we're expecting Dutch immigrants card to the bank in pivots. So that's potential. I'm a bit surprised actually we're not seeing Spanish immigrants on this map. It's about 1.7 trading posts worth of XP income, which is very, very good. You get an outpost wagon, which, uh, you know, outpost wagons across the map build wherever. You know, my thoughts on that is very, very strong. And you can train consulate pikemen from there as well, which would be good at season talks. So. I would have thought that a power play here from Kevin would have been Spanish immigrant and lock down the middle of the map, force your Swedish opponent to torp the salt mines on the on the wide parts. And yes, he can get mines down, but the torps down, but that would have really hurt Swin's eco. And I think that would be the because he's already starting to knock down that middle. That's where the outpost and the pikemen coming out would really put some pain on. I I, I completely agree. The only problem with Spanish immigrants is because there's no TP, and I've done Spanish immigrants numerous times, the only problem is because for Ungers, this is very standard. Uh, you know, Sweden don't go for a starting TP, so they can play their normal build order. If you don't have a starting TP with USA, your third card after Spanish immigrants, although Spanish immigrants does give you that, t uh, that trickle, it still takes quite a while in age two before that, that third age card comes in. Uh, sorry, that... that third card comes in and that's really important for the tempo when you do spanish immigrant rush so yeah i just wanted to mention that so i i, I like the dutch i like the dutch bank uh, the dutch immigrants here so he got 140 xp for that getting built as well so yeah i mean i i like this play i don't think spanish immigrants would have been a bad HG thing. play here hg play we're not going for um up with virginia not looking to go virginia general assembly going for philadelphia i think it is yeah, yeah. philadelphia convention now, this is something I've seen Kevin do quite a lot. He's decided to go for French immigrants this time instead of the Chinese immigrants. But he likes to go for this church. He likes to get that gold trickle. And he likes to play heavy age two. So I think we're going to see a lot of age two play here from Kevin. It's still awkward, though, because he's got the barracks down from the age up. So he's naturally going to be opening up with some musketeers and then maybe pivot into state militia to try and better counter the Carolians. <laughs> I think Philadelphia Convention has gives you some sort of access to sharpshooters as well, so that's a potential play to, to do the Carolian some range, but I just... Carolian leather, leather cannon sat in the middle of the map. I, I'm not, not really seen the weakness here from Ungers. He's got his eco and military secure knocked down, and he's frozen in, but all this project just buys Ungers more time for torping and getting himself moving forward. Mm, a nice villager pick up there for Kevin. Almost got caught out there. Almost got caught out in a, in a really kind of sticky situation. But it looks like he was fine. He's pulled it back. One thing to mention in this Caroli this little musketeer matchup here is that Carolians shoot faster, so they're generally quite good in musketeer versus musketeer matchups. But regulars have better range, so they'll be able to micro much more efficiently than the Carolians. I can only think the reason that Ungers wanted to prod there was just to try and trade while the ecos are somewhat low or growing in favor of ungers so it takes time for kevin to remass and get a mass to push in by that time more tops down the ecos flying but i wouldn't want to be taking fights here without you know just losing that mass but that's the mass you want to cover your lever cans which you're most likely wanting to invest in yeah, he's already losing the fight and things it's only walking range of 14 range muscle tears you're going to lose in two years before the even attack so it's you have to be fully committed and yeah, Ungers must have lost like about six Carolians now. Kevin's probably down two regulars. Oh, wow. yeah. It's certainly better trades here for Kevin. And Ungers going back in is just, now just play defensive, man. I, I, I know you always want to be very busy with your military, but this is not the type of busy you want. So it's going to turn around. One regular goes down, but three Carolians nearly lose all their HP there. And it's just, that's not the trade you want. 
Yeah, this isn't great. Like I said, because that two range makes a big difference, especially when it comes to the micro war. So the Carolines will lose, especially in equal amounts. They will lose against these regulars. I, 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 this this 165 wood is really, really cheeky. I, it's it's going to give a good spike, a resource spike. And that's a really nice flag. And I was just about to say, he's definitely eyeing, eyeing this treasure up. And what he's done here, if we take a quick look at the fog of war what that flag did temporarily was give him some line of sight around that flag so that was a really nice play it looks like it did get kind of eaten up if you will by the torp and that took it away but for that temporary what five seconds it gave him some line of sight so he knew if the carolines were going to charge on him or not wait torps can gather food wood gold and United States flags? Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you heard it here first, this, Harrison. You've heard this it here house first. Is even, this house is broken. It's even better than it we thought it would be. Oh, Ooh. that artillery foundry, yeah. So the lever count. Pervers going in, but where's that? As I go in, he may sit the oh, 40 range. Oh, my God, it's going down, surely. Go! That has got a sting. That is a great pickup for Kevin there. And these torps all being in one place. We said it was a good idea, but it's a double-edged sword because that means it's going to be really tight for all the units to get in here. And it also means that it's one singular place where Kevin can just take down all the torps. So that was a really, really nice pickup by Kevin. A absolutely brilliant play. This is, this, is your, this is the timing, though, that Kevin wants to push because he knows that there's no more artillery coming in a long time. And his state militia regular combo will dump on the Carolines here from Sweden. Surely they, they have to. I, I can't see... Why they wouldn't beat this. And now, with buying time for the artillery foundations to come up, the, it's the top population here for Sweden looking very strong as well. So the eco is flowing in. It is coming in. And that window starting to close. Yeah, I have to somewhat agree. It, as long as that lever cannon could have been taken and down relatively quickly, then he also has light infantry yes. in here as well, which is going to do bonus damage to pure Carolians. So I think he was in a really, really strong position there to take to, to pretty much clear up. Although yes. the masses are kind of e kind of equal, so um, I'm sure Kevin backed up for a reason. Yeah, we've got four Huss now, which, is, as you saw there, it's not really much of a path in environment. I know those Huss are going to go try and raid him, but actually... Most of these DE maps have very decent and respectable hunting opportunities, so I'm not expecting to see too many villagers out the base this early in the game, but it's just solid solidifying. Oh, a Bowerbob tree, 500 yes. wood. Jesus Christ. That is an insane treasure. I have to say, that is the one of the coolest looking treasures I've ever seen as well. It did have quite a few elephant guardians, and Ungers is yeah, going to uh, pick up and pick that up now. I, I, would, I would say it's not... Uh, well, I'm not going to say unbalanced, like it's such a huge swing, but it's not a pick up an age of one and go, haha, I can do this all in age one. You have to commit it later in the game. And, but, uh, port publishing's going up. Okay, great, lots of veal, but they can run around, maybe drop down another barrel. Oh, no, Minutemen. Just trying to ensure that villagers are gonna, can happily work. But, uh, that's yeah. more talk populations. 170. At the stage of the game, actually losing fields just doesn't matter, Sweden. That's the funny part of it. It just doesn't matter. I mean, use, losing a, a handful, you're right. It almost doesn't matter, depending on the tempo. We've got a push in um, USA base. It's like, it's like oh, yeah. Across. Three cannons leading the charge against the infantry. And it's pure, purely infantry in the fire. I know there's a fast raid around against some decent build rates actually back at home, but it's this fight in front of the base that actually really starts to be pretty brutal. The lever can just give it a splash down as well, and I think that's another eco card there from Kevin. So he's he's not really reinforcing his fight. He's actually taking a. Oh, that's a good pop though. It's it's going to be a close fight. Those are hot to come back in and try and help the cannons. I, I can't tell which way this is going to go. That the problem is going to be these three lever cannons. Just they're just going to be able to wail on, and Kevin really doesn't have any way of dealing with that. The cab are coming in, but there's only two left. Here's and there's too many Carolines. Yeah, he hasn't even started to try and take down the cannons. Like, sometimes when I'm playing like, Dutch skirmishers, I'll try and focus down the cannons first before they do too much damage. Okay, one cannon's gone down, but they've each got like seven kills each. They've certainly done pretty well. Another cannon comes in. Now there's more Carolines and regulars. The army's just collapsed. Yeah, so raiding the veil is great. Corporate Eco's going berserk still, and you just lost your entire infantry, and we're not dealing with the threats of the artillery foundry uh, adequately. DGA is down, is he thinking of aging up? No, he's still the regulars and trying to hold it, but he just he kind of stayed too long and just took too bad of a trade instead of trying to kind of back it up and see how to come back in. And that this is the problem of the Musk Arsenal Foundry versus pure infantry compositions. 
I like he, 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 the, the response now is that he's trying to make some Kree trackers, which obviously have bonuses versus Carolines, but three of them just isn't going to be enough. He's going to need a good chunk of about ten of them to be able to repel this Carolean army. And it does look like there's some cab being built by Ungers himself now, so we might have a free composition, uh, unit composition from Ungers here. I wonder what that 500 wood was spent by Sweden. Probably stable and three torps. Stable two torps. Place of mines maybe. Just a lot of nice nice um, reinforcements there. Defensive stable. Um, I, I can understand, you know, just randomly putting buildings here. I think a lot of people have this ingrained habit of playing too much French in Germany. Stable goes in base. No, if you've got a forward building base, just put stable mid as well. It just helps the reinforcements time and... Makes everything tick along a little bit faster. And now there's Hustle got across the map, which is actually this map is it's pretty sizey, it's pretty big. It feels mm. small. There are four channels. There's the inside, two mid and one outer ring. It's a big map. I actually am really liking this map. It's uh it's making some, some really great play and there's some really cool chokes in here as well, and it's kind of forcing some aggression. So I, I actually do really like this map. What can I do? You heard it here first, Lion likes a good old choke. Cheeky choke. <laughs> Well, okay, so nice. if we look at the macro, this is, this is a massive shame for Kevin. He really wants to age up right now. He's going to be clicking that age up any second right now. The 500 food, I think, first Pennsylvania rifles from the church card. This is going to, it is a hefty cost. He is going to get the age up in as well. That's going to do well, but not against the lever cannons. The lever cannons are going to have to deal with them somehow. Maybe TC fire, maybe some cab. But he's going to have to hold on now until he can age up. And that's when he's going to be able to get the Gatling guns. I presume that's what he's going to want to have. He's, pr he's praying for a miracle Gatling play. But uh, Gatling's obviously nerfed against the Sars now. Unger's going uh, H2. Must Huss. A couple more Hussars here should be able to you know, solidify his offensive threat. But it might be the classic pushing while aging here. I haven't seen too many more reinforcements. Only a couple... Um, Fitz Cannon's behind us, and yeah, the click up is there for Sweden. So, does he go inf leather infantry guns? Does he go for Jaeger Caroline? Does he go for Hackpolite? Whatever. I, d I think he's comfortable doing whatever he's doing. I think he wants uh, to uh, go for the, the, like, the leather cannon to go for the infantry gun upgrade because, to be honest with you, Gatling guns, although they're a decent artillery unit, they are going to get absolutely destroyed by mass leather cannons. They're, they're, they're going to have. They're not going to be able to counter them. Uh, it's going to get two hit by these lever cannons, and the Gatling guns are not going to be able to one hit the lever cannons back. So, yeah, I think that's just what he just. It, and all he needs to do to add to that is just mass Carolians to protect the lever cannons. I think that's definitely his play. He can add in a few cav, and I think, but that the most fi useful thing that the cav are going to be able to do is go for some raiding, which is what I would advise he does now pretty much we've got a counter push now coming in from kevin he's just about aged up we'll see what the first card is from kevin in a second and like i said light gun carriages is going to be the first card that comes in for ungers and now bear in mind this card essentially makes them industrial lever cannons so yeah they're going to be really strong and that's going to be really difficult for kevin to, to deal with. I, to be honest with you i don't actually know how he would effectively counter them i mean you can go you can go... I mean, Cav is, the, Cav is the most effective way to deal with them, but you're going to have to mass a lot of them because there's a lot of Carolines protecting them. And the only other way, alternative, is Culverins. But in small amounts, light gun carriages, they're just gonna, the lever cannons are going to absolutely destroy Culverins. Argo is asking if Case Shots is in the deck here for the Swedish player, Ungers. Got a nice little extra card if it is in there. No, it's not, unfortunately. But I think that's okay. It's, it's just the whole... Sweden taking a bit of that control of the talks on all those mines nearby and just having one place just to really worry about all the fighting and, and the choke points and U USA can't really go around to the middle, they have to go through the middle, they have to deal with this uh, force now. Three Gatlin's come out but uh, we, we can pray for some miracle action but uh, versus industrial kind of pseudo anti-artillery artillery, they're, they're pretty good versus Orders. artillery in that weird sense, they're, they have high HP in this fight. It's with a back off. He's, he's got so much more eco at this point. Just look at the scores. And sometimes the scores do help you in this decision to decide whether you do want to push or you want to play it safe and back out. And you know, some vills nearby on these outer rings. Just five vill kills. That's all he needs. And he's done, very happy. Bit of pathing along the cliffs. So there's some Carolines. Uh, they don't really know how to follow orders. They don't know where they go. <laughs> do they want to they jump off the cliff? No, they're going to run into the other uh, army. Yeah, that's the better way. Oh my 
Oh, it's you could say DE half in, but that is the map. That is, <laughs> that is, that is definitely one of my favorite things about this map. These these unique cliffs where you can get units not stuck on there, but they do kind of walk up on there, and you've got to manually walk them off. And it, it, it can and be annoying, you can but also, it's I really like. You can also put stuff like culverins up there as well, though. That's, ah, that's yes. the interesting one. Imagine that's mortars up there. Imagine some mortars up there. Now that would be big brain, right? Hi. Some doom raids coming here. Also, I apologize. Hack the pellet raids at the top here. Probably yes. picking off one of the settlers. Doesn't want to lose to that many of them, though, and that's, uh, that's quite a big uh, loss there. Just imagine that dragoons are still actually a anti vil raiding thing. I think Ungus is confused which patch he's on. That's not the unit <laughs> yeah. for the job anymore. They're actually um, more effective at raiding villagers from range, I believe, than they are melee. No, I, th I think I think I think they added the negative onto the range attack as well. I did think they? that was okay. covered. I didn't think they did. It's, just, but okay. it's what it's one of those things that you can they seem to address oh. some of these things and then forget the, the other connotations and the other stats, which are uh, fair enough. But those oh, the gap lanes go down and there's no offensive threat now versus the level cannons. There's and the so Carolines. much artillery there for Ungers and the first Culverin shot getting fired off and there's so many Carolines in there. And they're just going to go, buddy. They want to say, come here, guys. I want a hug. Let's charge. And it's just, this is going to be a massacre for Ungus. At least I can't say that uh, Ungus is a one-unit um, enjoy or a two-unit comp enjoy. He's actually got both the infantry guns and the falconet. So a little bit of hustle, snare, and potential. And a cheeky cold there to try and pick up the Gatlins. And that's what happened. As soon as the Gatlins fell over, then Kevin's got no offensive threat here to deal with this army. And... Ah, oh, it's looking tough, mate. It's looking tough. I think the tapping out is an option. He's trying to go for a town centre on the edge of the map, but uh, unfortunately, economy is not what he needs. He needs a miracle right now, and uh, I don't think uh, Kevin can buy one in time. I, I, I have to agree. I mean, the scores aren't that bad. I mean, they're starting to get worse now. A couple of Colvins coming out, but these these leather cannons, these infantry guns, are going to absolutely destroy them. Two more culverins coming in from Angus. Yeah, I think the resign button for Kevin is looking pretty hot right now. Fighting with the le leather cannon, just running in, taking two shots and just getting out of there. And yeah, that's the game. GG, well played. Ungus taking the first game of this best of seven. £50 smackdown with uh, some essentially some standard play, but playing the map to his advantage, just locking down the middle and playing from there. Almost, almost through the game with the artillery factory wagon, but <laughs> yes, actually, yes. Thank, thankfully, maybe balanced the game up just a little bit more. Uh, USA versus Sweden, no TP, not look, not looking good there, was it? It wasn't. And and when you think about these two sieves, and maybe if you look at it from a tier list perspective, they're both very good civilizations that are going musk cannons in different styles. So you've got regular and Gatlings, and then you've got Carolians and Falconets. However, Sweden just out eco USA, and and they do it pretty hard as well. So it just feels re it's always an uphill battle for USA in this matchup. And I I feel like trying to contest with the Musk Cannon just isn't going to work. You need to try and do something different. But Kevin put on a good show. Uh, it, it was it was difficult. We felt like he should have pushed in earlier, and he had his momentum at one point, but he decided to back up, and maybe that's what cost him the game. Just take a quick look at the village not account. Really got much, yeah, not really got much to add there. Um, yeah, the resources is always... It's, it's, it's the fact that at the moments where Kevin had the opportunity to push in in the second age, the Swedish players' economy was starting to accelerate past the United States. And having The actual rate of income of resources was just much, much faster at that point. So the opportunity kind of went, and then later into the third age, the economy is just not close. If time went on, it just would have helped. It would have helped Ungers even more. That uh, me. Anyways, yeah. Okay, so game number two. Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is all going to be on the same cast anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. But we have Kevin playing as Brits, a very strong candidate, and we have Ungers playing as Mexico. This is going to be a good one. And on New England now, Harrison. When was the last time you saw this matchup on this civil uh, on this map? <laughs> well, so. When was the last time I saw one in 220-odd matchups on one in about 50, 60, 70-odd maps 
I don't think I have, Lion. There you go. Funny that. There I don't you go. think I have. It was yeah, a rhetorical so a... question, you know. So uh, yeah. that's why I'm excited. Mm. <laughs> ah, but when was the last time you saw a French mirror on Great Plains? Uh, there you go. Like you, <laughs> you, could, you could probably answer that one of some sort. <laughs> Uh, too too much, mate. Too much. Okay, so we've got um, Unger's Plain as Mexico, a civilization I'm very familiar with, and obviously Brits. Now he's decided to go for a starting market by the looks of it. Uh, whose TP is this? So Kevin. Wow. So Kevin's gone for starting TP with with Brits. So I think we know what we're going to see from Kevin. I think we might yep. see some GMT yep. build from here. We are also seeing another TP from Unger's as well. So yeah. Unger's is going for a market and a TP. Wow, he's going really greedy here. So I imagine we'll yeah. see hunting dogs and a house come up. Yeah, very nice. If you if you open the, the uh, refresh their deck, so just open up the home city and come back out of it. I am the Surely you'd have as a hotkey. Surely you'd have as a hotkey. Oh no, you don't. Um, the, the flag comes up and you can kind of see the deck they're picking. Um, I'm expecting Kevin to go GMC card one for the the two training posts in age one, and I think Brit. So Brit now awkwardly feels like he needs to play like a France. In the sense of, if they can't really push the opponent because of some defensive play or walling or whatever, they can just take mid-map control of TP line. And Brits and TP control isn't really a sentence put together, but there's, there's four TPs mid-map horizontal, which any player can take the full route if they want to go so, to do so. So it's not actually that bad. Uh, Kevin going two Vils first instead of GMT, maybe bluffing the GMT card. They'll, maybe, he want, maybe he wants to go GMT delayed. I'm... I don't know about that. I, I, I have sure. heard he likes to go for two vills, then into GMT. And I think GMT... I personally really like GMT. The fact that it comes in fast now with a new patch is, is a really nice buff to that card. However, is it is it is it going to be meta that it's going to be sent in age one? Who knows? However, I do think that's what Kevin likes to do. So I think we're going to see it second card. I just want to give a shout out to I Am The Real Peekaboo. Thanks very much for the gifted sub to British Zeus. Really, really appreciate it, mate. Hope you're enjoying the cast. Okay, so we've got oh, four. Oh, here we go. Here we go. The Ford Plantation H1. What an <laughs> amazing bit of game design here. My Genuinely, my favorite bit of Age of Empires 3 Defensive <laughs> Edition. The Ford Plantation. No, Ford Double Plantation H1. Come on. Round now, now, Harrison, you know what we Round said. Where, where, is, where is the deniability? Where is the counterplay to that? Oh, there is none. It's up. The, the amount of XP coming from there. And, yeah, Insurgents taking the TP line. Um, spawning military wagons. Training. Y you know, all that stuff coming up. So who knows? He might send the cathedral forward as well for for a bit of path blocking. Who knows? <laughs> so who G knows? GMT has come in for Kevin now, so he is going to age up quicker than he normally would. Uh, and Brits actually age up. At a, they've always aged up at a really good time, and that's been something of contention for a lot of top players because they age up essentially quicker than most civilizations, and they have a better eco. So um, th he's going to age up even quicker now with mm. the GMT build. So we'll see how that does, plays out for him. Yeah, I was playing with I was playing quite a few games with Passy last night. Passy, a great Brit player, great Brit enjoyer, and he was feeling a bit disgruntled. He, he said, "My Brits, they're just not the same." I'm like, I'm like inside going, "Yes, they're not meant to be the same." But it is an interesting proposition that um, there's still the whole give up and take of mentality. They've give up, they've taken off the manor house five woods and uh, three villas to two vill, but they've give up a very fast sending card, extra TP. Uh, I don't know why the cards need to be a fast send card. Maybe advanced train post now would be fast send. Maybe trade empire for Asia would be fast send because trade empire now is a is a significantly worse card than British DMT. So kind of for consistency balance, maybe who knows? We'll have to find out. But um, I think Ungers with his insurgents forward play. I haven't seen quite seen the barracks. Oh, it's still an age two. Yeah, the uh, so GMT a... <laughs> helping him age up quicker. And can I just can I just mention that whilst you was talking, Harrison, Kevin took a villager to the hacienda and murdered all of the livestock. <laughs> that is oh, just did he? yeah, an oh, absolutely sorry. brilliant play. I, I just I just assumed I just assumed it was like a torpor. You just deleted the livestock and no. being absorbed by the hacienda. Like so, for anyone for anyone watching that doesn't understand why that's so brilliant, it's because each each livestock that is on a hacienda gives a small uh, food trickle to Ungers. So each Hacienda can have a small food trickle. It's currently only on 0.5. With a few livestock, it would be closer to around one. So because he's murdered 
all of these livestock, and he's oh. now eating it himself. Um, he's now only 0.5. I think that's I think that's just poor micro there from Ungers, considering that cows and sheep move at the same speed as the villagers. You can literally just run around the hacienda. It's definitely something he infinite. should have picked up on. Yes, it's definitely something he should have picked up on. <laughs> Gonna lose that villager, which is unfortunate. But that villager, and obviously you gather livestock a lot quicker. That villager definitely got a lot of mileage out of murdering all those livestock and then eating the livestock as well. So really, really nice play by Kevin there. Looks mm. like aside from that, we're gonna see some quite standard play from Brits. Okay, opening up with some musketeers, but now got some longbows as well. Ungers is gone. This is this is begging a two caravel shipment here from Brits to shit on the hacienda and barracks like. That is prime play. He does have to do caravels in deck. Is he going to load up the shipment up? <laughs> put the card in the in the chamber. Reload the gun. Fire the bullet. Come on. Two veils. Oh, oh, come no. on. He's letting why us down. Not, why would you not send two caravels here? Like, it would secure... be it would be rude not to on this on this map. It would be rude not to. We've seen it time and time again. And Ungers is just very brazenly not. He's not put a tower up. He's not getting any um, chips himself. So he's leaving himself very very vulnerable to those two car caravels. Where's the Brits um, edge up tower? Because I assume that would be right on the the coast on the pond there to defend. I would expect to see the two sloops from Mexico. They have that in the deck as well. They both have TP. Ungus has, um, yeah, Cathedral there. So his XP income's pretty decent. So he can go two sloops. Obviously, that little fishing card is a little naughty card. He can go for on the southern side as well to pivot out into good eco late game. So it's it, you know what? It's, this is taking a rather slow turn. I was expecting a bit more of a fast paced. Um, game, but I think people, these two players are slowly growing into this one. Yeah, I mean, Ungers decided to go take down both the TPs, which I, I actually really like because Kevin's invested quite heavily into them. He's obviously gone for the G GMT build and he's 200 starting wood for another TP. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's a really nice um, that's a really nice take there for Ungers. However, it does allow Kevin the time to mass up his army and his eco, which you know that's very dangerous as Brits, who arguably have the best eco in the game. And now the only the biggest problem for Ungers is going to be because he's allowed him so much time. How is he going to deal with mass longbows? That's going to be the biggest problem. Oh, Joe, Joe just mentions the. Um... 250, 250 skirmishes for Mexico. Like, I'm not going to comment any further on that. That is another blood, blood boiler. Oh, uh, quick line. Think of something productive. I can't. I can't think. Well, I, can't I mean, think. it's a great card, but it costs 500 resources, and essentially yeah, but, they're but, not going to be able why, to beat longbows. Why do they need bonuses versus villagers? Like, why does? Oh, because they're Mexican, they can kill villagers. Like, why is that part? Of hey, I love it. All right, and the two caravels are out now, and that's a really great response for Kevin. So. How, how is Ungers going to deal with this now? Mm. All Kevin needs to do is hang around near the shoreline and he's got no way of dealing with these caravels unless he ships them himself. But he's nowhere near shipping them. He no. hasn't got a card this yet. Is just, this is just good trades, especially the ca caravels and the saltier doors because saltier doors are decent damage but lowish HP. I mean, that's just n the nature of skirmishes as well. And the caravels, they don't mind the range resist. they got cannonballs. They bop right past that and saltier doors being picked off. And... Okay, the army's traded. Um, it's doubled down, but the caravels are still up, uncontested. Broadsides coming in again, picking off more units, reinforcing, and the outpost there can defend versus the two sloops. And so, oh, look at, at that. the moment, so Kevin is feeling quite contentious about himself. And we should give him time to get some more manor houses down to grow his economy and look for the longer term option. More cav coming out now, though, and that could be a really great response from Ungers. Musketeers is definitely the right call for Kevin here, but he's going to need more than five, and he hasn't got anything to deal with the skirms, so this could go this could go really nice to Ungers. He, he is having to go really wide around the map. Now putting his skirmishes on in uh, invisible mode, in stealth mode, that's really nice, but <laughs> what's it going to give him? What's it going to give him? The manor houses will no doubt see the skirms coming, so it's, yeah, it doesn't really give him, doesn't really give him much, and these two caravels just completely forcing Ungers. Look, he's now having to build another barracks on the other side over here just to protect it from the two caravels. The Hacienda is going to go down as well and that's going to deny essentially Ungers almost half a veal on food and it's going to give Kevin a lot of XP. So yeah. Let's look at the, um, let's look at the XP. Is it like 360 XP kill? Oh, 240. 240. So mm. really nice. And that's almost that's... going to give him another shipment. Really, really nice. So what does Brit ship here? Has he got gold crates to maybe pivot into? Is he going for more wood? He, like I say, he does have 600 wood and 700 gold available. I don't think he'll be going for an infantry upgrade at this time. 
Six Musks is potential, but is he looking to push out at the moment? I don't think he is. Well, you know, he does kind of need Six Musks for the, all that cav. He knows that the cav's around, but he does still have the two caravels. So he can always defend by the caravels. Goal coming in. I guess it's his time to try and age up. The only problem is he hasn't got those TPs now, so his age up will be at normal speed. His Vet Musk, Vet Longbow, Vet Huss research at normal speed. And GMT hasn't really paid off this game yet. I suppose you could say it bought time early on. But uh, that, that's the kind of where you'd hope to age up a bit fast and get those crucial techs in to kind of produce that timing window for the slow Brit age up. I do like the 700 gold. I was worried for a second because there's only a single Rax from Kevin down here. So, And his eco is pretty good, but it's not amazing for the, for the 11 minute mark. So I did wonder what he's going to do with that 700 gold. And he's going to go for the age up. But Ungers is going to see it now. He definitely sees mm. that gold line on the floor there. So he knows what's coming. So maybe we're going to see kind of an all-in uh, aggro kind of um, strat here from Ungers. However, he, how is he going to deal with TC fire, outpost fire, and caravels? patrolling the coast here all all kevin needs to do is just take his army if he's worried up to up to the lake here and these caravels this scorpion it's, it's just going to deal with anything that ungers has so ungers looking probably like he's going to want to try to age himself we'll take a quick look oh does it look like maybe he's he's no he's it's, it's, it? it's 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 okay because mexico looking to age up as well themselves but you'll also go for the cheeky let's go into the water late with two docks and 10 fishing boats cards and Oh no! Oh no! It's just a single. Oh, sing so that was that was the, that was a change now. So uh, you don't get two docks anymore. You get one dock. Whoa! Controversial change that is. It's actually a nice change because I did think the card, this card, was slightly overpowered. But the fact that it takes a long time for it to 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 make it worthwhile, um, mm. and now it only gives one dock. I think it's actually it's still a good card, but it, it's not something that can change the immediate you know beginning of any game you have to you have to use cards before it's worthwhile so yeah i mean i, it's, yeah, I, mean, I think it's a nice change I mean, yeah it's, it's also just the power of skin and cards like a nine fishing boat card in age two come mm. on man like Japan it's, has good five it's, fishing good boats. it's yeah. that's insane it's and a dock for um gill nets to invest in as well that's uh looking pretty good Oh, that scout is giving some... I saw that earlier on, this scout over here. It's really nice uh, by Ungers, just keeping it in stealth mode. So Ungers definitely sees what's going on around here, you know, that's and that's a really, really well, good position to put it in. More importantly, Ungers also definitely sees that Kevin is now out of natural hunt, is on berries. Mm. He does have that one hunt near the outpost and Caravels. He does have a little bit more food, but uh, if he wants that second bit of hunt, he has to take the middle TP area or push left onto the... Uh, is it not holding the show knee? It's uh, Goron Testament and try and take that. A oh, the age up, the gentleman pirate age up. Okay, well, it's an idea, but he could have locked down his own pond or taken the southern sea and really secured that. Oh, the the, the return caravel age really, up. Really, really nice, really great nice, age up yeah. because that's going to be able to deal with this barracks as well and, and, and allow Kevin to take back map control. There's another barracks that's in the same range as well. So I think Ungers might be forced to have to do something here. Kevin is going to scout over here and going to realise that there's docks here. So definitely going to have to have some response from Ungers here. And considering this is basically a freebie on age up, that's going to be quite frustrating for Ungers. Oh, hang on, hang on. Kevin's got um, advanced warships sent. Wow, he has. Wow. That's, wow, that, wow, that's wow. Uh, Maybe we'll see a frigate come from him next. Forward, forward frigate into forward ponds, maybe? That is, that's have also a very... Yeah, uh, that would be a have very to. good shout. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know your frigate drops uh, from my uh, suggestions, but that if the frigate <laughs> dropped then, those two falcs go bye-bye from yeah. uh, Ungers. They and, just and... walk right past the ponds. Being... That's super frisky. Yeah. Super risky, not frisky. Frisky! Maybe. I like frisky better, though. Maybe it might get frisky a bit. <laughs> I mean, I have to, being an old vanilla player myself, playing since 2007, this is this is a classic, you know, frigates and caravels being dropped on these lakes. So I imagine we will see that at some point. These two, oh, oh is he going to see the Falconess? He does dive in with the cap, is it going to be enough? Do the, do the oh, robot pull trick. oh, yeah. Oh, he's, oh, now yeah. he's backed up. But these, these, oh, these cannons are going to get in the mix. Oh, but are they going to get a bit muddled up? Is the parvin going to be a bit muddled? No, okay, then kind of okay trades for both there. Oh, that's you a can nice see shot what's well. happening here. You can see what's happening. Kevin just wants to tell Ungers, don't fight until I send my frigate, please. Exactly. He's just on his knees pray, praying. He's begging, but he can get the frigate in. Either pond, it doesn't matter. He's got, he's invested naval combat. That's such a huge investment for 
three Caravels on the field at the moment. And with his Caravels, they can't really engage Falconets because they're way too in range with their uh, was a broadside. And I, they don't even kill the Falconets. So it's it's uh, heavily favoured in the artillery there, as it should be in that matchup. But the Frigate kind of turns that one on its, on its head a little bit. I agree. Although, with the advanced, uh, with the improved warships, it does allow Caravels to get a really good shot off. And you know what it's like in the two Falconet versus two Falconet warfare. That can be the difference between one or two Falconets remaining for Kevin and both of them going down for Ungers. So I do think that a Caravel could do a good job of getting a really good uh, broadside attack off. However, however, it's risky. It's very risky and it's all about timing. One Culverin now coming in. And like you said, Harrison, the frigate is coming in, baby. The two primitive, three primitives top side. That's a... Uh... A thousand gold shipment there from Mexico that obviously European sieves and American sieves have a weaker version of four privateers that the natives have. But that is going to take control momentarily of the ponds. I actually have a really poor Falconet trade there. The, the caravel was just about. Oh, it doesn't! The, oh, the 5 HP Falconet! 5 HP, alive. that's so unfortunate. Another shot comes off. That's, that's just return value. But the question is, where's the frigate going to spawn? Because he did move his flag down to the southern sea. This could be a massive. Uh oh, uh, it's, it's right underneath the thing, but it might not spawn. It might get despawned here. Oh, Ooh, it does. Right. It does get a And look at that bad boy with the Culverin, that's right. Culverin, defensive Culverin on the um, Primateers. Nice little play there. He's actually going to clean this one up. I do feel clean like. Up. I do feel like the Royal William could have been sent over here, and the Culverins would have made short work of the Privateers. So maybe that might be a mistake. Maybe that might be a mistake because I feel like well, now he's made it, it limited. Is, well, it is, is it not? It, Brits still on 55 vils, and it's still on Unger's momentum to try and keep pushing. He does have some water on the southern side, but he kind of gave up making fishing boats. He hasn't actually made any more fishing boats, so the actual boom there is pretty low. His village account is pretty low themselves, and Brits are still happily hunting on his side of the map. So he has still has time, and he has now a frigate to secure middle map presence with all the hunts as well. So if Brit wants to move into mid map and take... Um, decent hunting opportunities he now has the ability that's 16 deer card in his deck that's an interesting one yeah, 16 one the, deers and a one fishing and, a, and a fish yeah i think it's it, basically a shoal of fish that can go to the water um, oh right a fish in, a, a fish drop on the water for well, some reason i thought it said fish drop on the land i'm no, like no what? and it, that might actually be in a few cards time that at, well not even that long it might be really worth it because if these food uh, if these uh, hunts are contested, there's not a lot else for Ungers on the map, so it might actually be a really, really handy in a pinch, as I like to say. Um, but we're going to get some goon raids on here. All the musketeers aren't for, far behind, so maybe one or two for the goons here. Now, I think having the United States having the Dragoons might solve their Dragoon crisis, because we're like <laughs> four patches in, and we still don't know how USA Dragoons work or... I think you're having a bit of like, oh, this this new latest carbine cavalry uh, change is a bit mev, and it got, then you got explained to it. You're like, oh my god, it's amazing now. And we, it's still a bit like, is it? Is it not? We don't know. Uh, well, well, apparently, always... apparently they're just like goons now. They're very similar to goons now. Um, ooh, we're oh, we're gonna see some artillery. Oh, and Ungers, Ungers is late there. Where's the frigate? Where's the frigate coming in to snipe? Oh, the, man, the man's just chilling with his boats. Oh, He's just no, chilling that's with his boats. That is unfortunate. He needed to lose at least one Culverin for that to be a decent trade for Kevin. Yeah. But it's not. And he's got. He's got. He's got to try and time Culverin shots so he can get the. Oh! oh he, ta he, ta he doesn't target the low one. And this like frigate with improved kill. warship just tanking two Culverin shots like it's nothing and saying, "Come here, boy. I'll mess you both up." But look at that. It's just single-handedly taking on two Culverins. What a beast! This improved warship card being a really, really good shout for Kevin. What a beast. People moan about fixed guns being broken, but what about the frigate? <laughs> We've got to look after that one now, haven't we? Absolutely I'm joking. brilliant. Oh, you're joking. Oh, you're joking. That's good play. And I think the timing there was a little bit off. I think there's potential there for Kevin to protect, to keep at least one of his Falconets alive to, pr to provide a little bit of offensive threat. That Falconet could be in front of the frigate now. Two coals coming in. That frigate has seen he has to run away, but he, he, he's in a pond. He can't run forever. He hasn't got the space. He's trying to let that recharge ability. The call of Kevin needs to try and come oh. to the rescue, but that, that's going to go down. He just... Okay, now he's committed to make a response, but it's just going down. Oh, actually. Really unfortunate. Nice little snipe. I'm going to try for one more, but the quick fire, quick bang, that's gone down. Bang, and that's really unfortunate. 
That being able to tank two culverins, but four culverins in total, that's just not going to happen. So that's really unfortunate. I feel like Kevin could have had better micro there and he could have been more aggressive with that culverin. Maybe even been more aggressive with his army as well, just to back up that frigate and allowed it time to get down here to heal again. But uh, that's really, really nice play by Ungers. So uh, well played. Ungers currently on 60 bills. If we take a quick look at Kevin, he's on 59 bills. <laughs> and Ungers' score is looking pretty decent as well. I feel that Kevin's missed his opportunity to, to move into the center portion of the map and take the natural resources he's now having to enter a culverin wall where you know uh, it doesn't take long to lose a culverin fight in exchange you, you, you the saying is you can't win a game in 10 seconds but you can certainly lose a game in 10 seconds and what a little bit of a blunder a little bit of attack moving your car was moving too far forwards and you could just say goodbye to 1500 resources for no return all right Ungers is currently somehow getting back into the momentum in, into the lead. We do have a dock down there for Kevin. We do have advanced warships. So training another frigate is certainly not a terrible decision. And he will need another frigate to try and hold on middle if he wants to go that direction. I, I, I don't want to see Kevin on mills this game, unfortunately. I think if you go on mills, you are kind of waving the uh, the white flag in just kind of in that feeling and sense of it you, you've got a little bit of gold mine you've got some trees get a frigate going and then push yeah seeing that mill is is kind of painful uh i mean kevin has kind of failed to take map control and have access to any of these herds whilst we mm. see ungers is now got access to it and this is what i was talking about earlier while i still feel like the frigate should have gone on this pond over here and he could have yeah. handled the privateers with. And if he if he did that, then he would have been able to take down all this infrastructure here. It would have bought him so much time, and he would have been allowed to just kind of take control of the center map. But he hasn't the done only, that. Kind of the only if kind of problem there is that you're at fully at the mercy of other sieves' coals. You just can't get away. But in your pond, you can kind of back yourself up into a corner and then meet up with your own coals to kind of counter into a cold on cold war. But um, mm. it's hustle from Kevin, smart buying time. And there's Kevin, he's playing Musk Hus, but he's got longbows. The longbows are so good versus skirmishers. They're very good versus goons. They're good at bills. They're... Longbows is a great unit, and we're not seeing too much of that play at the moment. It's a foods and woods based unit, so he can just keep that gold alive for artillery. And yeah, he's starting to really invest now into longbow production, which is good to see. And now he's got the longbows, he feels comfortable. Comfortable, should I say, moving out, taking trades where he can. Cold fight here, three on three, and Ungus takes first shot. Yeah, really nice micro there by Ungus. It seems like he's doing better in the artillery war. It's there's a, it's very close margins, Ooh. but it does feel like he's inching with can it. You, can you um use your find Arsenal hotkey? I'm sure you've got that hotkey line. I'm sure you've got that hotkey to check. Not artillery foundry, Arsenal for the line of sight upgrade for artillery pieces. Oh, um, I. I do have it, well, but it's not working. So... For Ungers. Oh, okay. Apologies. Yeah, mine's uh, Control R. There we go. Oh, he hasn't got it. He hasn't got it. Okay. Oh, no, he <laughs> is getting it now. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, that, that's just that foresight, that big brain of yours, that five head, Harrison. <laughs> oh, he's probably listening at the moment. Going, you know what? That's not bad. I did it, actually. I'll write that down. Yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. Okay, so we do have defender's advantage for Kevin, so maybe he could make this work. He's got the better position, but guys, he's just not paying any attention, and he's just letting it... Oh, is it? Ungers is just doing better with the artillery war here, and it's really letting Kevin down. Scores are really, still really tight. The five curves have come in, though, from Ungers. That's not a card you see every day. And if we take a quick look, it is quite expensive. Have we, have we got friend or foe colours online by any chance? Oh, you know it. You know it. You know the score with that. <laughs> and the colours have flipped. Ah, so, so, so the um, line of sight here just gives so much comfort for Ungus slow pushing with culverins. He gets to see the culverins before they come in range, and it's no surprise. They can He can see where all the longbows are. He yeah, has got full control in. of the army. Oh, but it's nowhere near. So it's not going to be enough for a big power spike there. That's unfortunate. And yeah, you're right. Mm. Uh, Ungers, and, and he has the extra culverin, and that's just so important in these artillery wars, is having that extra culverin. I do think Kevin needs more more culverins, but I think he's deciding to go for cavalry. He's out of gold. Look, he's got no gold mine at the moment. I think he's got one left, but that must be like 500. Oh, he's still got the best part of 1,000 remaining. That's, that's not too bad. I was worried about he's down to his last 500, but he had to like really ration out, like, what is my priorities? <laughs> Kevin be like, this is my government's priorities with with the 500 gold I'm collecting from the taxpayers. I will 
stop the culverins. I will stop the Mexican boats. I will. <laughs> well, Rusty like... airs on Musketeer Longbirds. Uh, they've done some really good um, work, the consulate. Gentiles, I guess. Oh, they're called Salingo Crassiers, but they're a consulate. Now um, in comes the cavalry, and is he going to be able to clear everything up? There's still a lot of goons, and there's still a lot of these curs. And with that amount of musk, that's just not going to be enough. These curs putting really in wants, some work. He really wants them on the longbows, though. He wants to run past the musks and take it. The dragoons are getting relatively slaughtered here by the hussars. There's no moving back. There's no lesson to the skirmish. Just tank it and keep the goons alive. The goons are relatively expensive. So actually, a good trade there for Kevin in terms of cost value. And I, he's resigned. Wow. Oh, wait. It's, <laughs> there's the GG. I'm looking at your... I was looking at your screen, I thought Ungus was on uh, 20,000 points. I didn't realize it was on 29,000 points. Well, what okay, a fair play. Really, really great game. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm happy it was so close on probably my favorite map. Um, no, that's, a, it was, that's a good game. It was, it was enjoyable. And the map made it enjoyable. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I do feel like Kevin, the thing that let him down that game was not putting the frigate on this leg. I really felt like if he did that, he could have fought into the game and 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 took dominance mm. on the map and 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 then that would have allowed him to get more raids that would allow him to take the water but because he didn't he, he played it safe which i understand but i i feel like you needed to be further thinking and understand that a culverin can take these privateers and the frigate is important for you to win the game he may have won the battle but he lost the war but a great performance by ungers great performance by both players ungers just playing very standard and very aggressive and although he got he, basically these two ships the the caravel he got caraveled if you will um he still mm. he still managed to come back into the game so really really well played yeah i haven't really got too much to add on there um it'd be interesting to note as well if that arsenal came up a little bit earlier those culverins could have been teched with flaming shots for extra bonus damage versus warships so although pond play is really good it is also really bad and has its downsides at the same time, in the sense of the sea. Uh, maybe, maybe I've played too much Unknown games recently, where you have like 20 elephants in base, but uh, hey, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, thanks for that, Harrison. And can I just, can I now mention, so we've got a Scotland map. So I'm so glad people on Discord pick Scotland. So what I did for the third and fourth maps... I've got my Discord members to pick which map from a, from a selection, I think, of, of three or four it was. And uh, they ended up picking Scotland. I think the other maps were like Finland and maybe, I can't remember the other map that was. It was crazy. Lithuania. I Lithuania. voted for that one. So yeah. all really good maps, but I'm glad Scotland got picked because it's not one that's often been seen. It's not on the competitive map pool. Although it is a very competitive map and I really, really like it. Mm. Uh, it's got everything. It's got the TPs. It's got natives. It's got cool water. It's got like a separation of land. You're going to both start off with a really cool boat over here. So it gives it that really cool feel, that really uniqueness to it. So I'm glad Scotland's played. Now for the next map, by the way, guys, we're gonna I'm gonna have you guys in Twitch chat pick the map. So um, I don't know how I'm gonna do that. I might have to wait till this game is over before I can do that. Um, but if someone in Discord, oh, sorry, if one of my mods that is also in Discord, uh, did I put the, no, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll sort it out next game. But I am gonna, I am gonna get you guys to. Um, I'm gonna make a poll. I'm gonna get you guys to pick. So, yeah, I just thought I'll, I'd I'll make that. the poll and I'll put it as. Um, oh yes, um, Dark, seen, uh, seen... I'll, I'll put it as I'll put it as Esoc Daka or unknown. <laughs> <laughs> take, take, take your poison the blue pill yeah. or red pill. But What's Harrison, gonna be? you've got you saw you you saw the map pool right in um in our Discord right the Discord with with uh, Kevin and Ungers. So if if I, I, I put that in there, didn't I think... actually look. I didn't actually read it. I, okay. I think I saw game one and then saw your little poll. Which one do you want to be like the, the uh, viewer pick? But I can't, I can't remember what's next. Uh, okay, we can we can sort it out next game. That's not a problem. We can have a five minute break. Okay, so let's kick off with this one. So we're playing on Scotland. We've got Kevin playing as Germany and Ungers playing as Russia. A classic matchup, may I add. The only, what, what's going to be the nice little sprinkle icing on the cake is the fact that both of them start with a dinghy and we're both going to see how long it takes before they actually notice that they've both got a dinghy because um, it's not something that they're familiar with. Oh, and Kevin's the first off the bat. He moves the dinghy. He sees it. Ungers still <laughs> hasn't seen the dinghy yet, though. We'll see how long i imagine it won't take that long but this could be catastrophic if he doesn't notice it very quickly you know what the funny thing is is like when the devs are like all right guys we're gonna put villagers in the fishing boats so they're manned by actual villagers i'm like 
Ah, uh, you know what? It's a ghost. You didn't need you, you didn't need to do that. <laughs> that was never an issue. But now you've done that. Okay, fair enough. But now I've seen regular fishing boats. I've been coming back to this empty dinghy with oars being rowed, <laughs> but no one on it. It looks it's so a stupid. ghost. It looks so out of place. Like, <laughs> yeah, like that's, I love it. I love it. Oh, that is, that's cool. that's quality. And that's Ungus, quite funny. Ungus still hasn't recognised it at the moment, and that's kind of crazy. Especially with mm. all this micro that's going on with the explorers, he's probably not going to notice it. So that's that's that could be catastrophic for Ungus, and maybe just. Yes, I, I don't know why. Kevin's just deciding to just row it, and I don't know. Put it. You gotta put it on food, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's not virgin on food, is it? It's, it must, might be like a, like a tenth or like a third or a half. I can't imagine. I don't know. I can't good. remember. But he's not setting out the nets just yet. Well, well look at look at Ungers. You've got the um gather rates on, so just look at how much yeah, is he. But Ungers, it, but Ungers isn't. That's the problem. That's what I'm saying. Oh, he's just stood Ungers, there. Oh. Yeah, he's just stood there, and he's not realised. So you you basically picked Scotland so you can look at dinghies and don't care about what the rest is happening. It's just going to be just watching dinghies for the next <laughs> 40 is, minutes. This is this is where the action's at, mate. This is where the action is at. Oh, and there we go. At almost two minutes, Ungers does realise that he does have a dinghy. Yes. And we've got Top 10 three players, though, if you guys. What, let's give them a round of applause, guys. Top 10 players <laughs> at, at their finest. They think they're the dog's bollocks. Can't even... You find the idle villager button. So it's interesting that uh, we will pay attention to what's going on in the map in a second. But it's interesting how they both decided to kind of take it down to their side of the map. It's like they want the line of sight. I know 0.33 isn't a lot. Yes. But especially at the beginning of the game, that's when it's at its most crucial. And that's what's going to stop any delay in getting to age 2 as quickly as possible. So I would have liked to have seen, if it was <laughs> me, I certainly would have put it on a fish straight away. <laughs> <laughs> Bless me, I'm sneezing. Bless um, you. It's 0.33 is half a berry gatherer. I think berries are 0.67. Mm. So, so it's not game changing, it's... but it's certainly important for the beginning of the game. Can we check out the can we check the mine underneath the at the southern TP? Oh, it's a gold mine as well. Okay, so Germany having access to two gold mines here. That is spicy. German mercenary has recently flown off and been quite amazing. Um, he's going for a mix. Oh, he's going for his. I think he's going for his na like his native Chevaliers deck. Is is that the land? Yeah. So we've deck? got we've got a few. We've got a couple of the new no. cards. So we've got this uh, Circle Army, which is really interesting, um, and it's actually quite strong, although it is quite expensive. And we've also that, got the. Wasn't that re when it came out like really, really terrible, and they yes. busted that twice? Yes. 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 Right. Yeah. And it needed the buff. We've also got this yeah. card, which I'm really like, and I actually uh, put a YouTube video out on it yesterday. And uh, I really, really like it. It's um, it's definitely going to be good in certain again. Again, buffed recently. Is it, is it plus two chevaliers as well, as well as the conversion or? I, I don't. Wait, did it convert no, or ship? No, it didn't. I it it just converted them, and now it's co now it costs five hundred food, but it gives you six of them as well. Oh what? Mm. So look, have a have a read. Okay, so you get eight goons for five hundred food. Yeah. And replaces war. That's insane. Previously, it was just. It Previously, it was, it was just converting wall wagons, wasn't it? I'm not sure it's insane because if you take the card away and replace it with with the free wall yeah, wagons, yeah, but 500, 500 wall... food, 500 yeah. food is pretty easy to pick up. I like... agree, I agree, I agree. But I, 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 I think... never convert wall wagons. No, you, no, you wouldn't no. want it to convert wall. No, wagons you anyway, wouldn't. No, like, that would be terrible. <laughs> no, 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 no. But like, um, as anyway, eight vet goons. So let's call it vet goons. Eight vet goons. I think they're more like eight old school vet hack polites before the um, nerfs. For for a five hundred food, yes, please. Like that's that's taking the Chinese was it Beiyang Army card and just make it and putting that in, in the garden. Just say there you go, sit down over there. This is the real card. <laughs> that's very strong. Whether whether it's going to be the meta for Germany as opposed to just going the normal route is 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 it's debatable. I I personally think because they're more like hacker pellets than goons, um, and then obviously you can make them after. So. Uh, I think it would be cool, and I think it would be good in certain matchups. But in other matchups, I think you're not going to want to have it. I think you're just going to want to go for normal war wagons instead, and and use that 500 food resource into just you know making units. So it's going to be really cool for the German mains. I've played around with it. But I'm certainly no German master, so it's going to be interesting yeah. to see what the German mains actually do with it. Anyway, lines. Uh, back to the actual game. Okay. Well, now it's five minutes. Let's actually talk about the actual game. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, this matchup is essentially. If Jimmy gets to the third age, it's pretty much GG. I uh, turn your friend or foe cutter off, please. We can please. do that next game. We can do that next game. No, Dow. What is it? 
What is it? Well, like, I, just, I, I don't just actually... Just press Alt-F. Just press Alt-F. Just press your friend of a hotkey. It's not hard. What, what's my it's computer? not hard line. Watch, watch my computer. La, la, that's what no. happened when I pressed Alt-F. No, not Alt-F4. Alt-F. I don't know. You're there a lost you cause line, you are. I am. Lost cause. Yeah, it's not working. Uh, we can Again, I can sort the hotkeys out later. Um, let's talk about the it's game, not... Harrison. Let's talk about the game. Talk about the game. Okay, we've got, we've got Musketeer Cossack pr pressure here. Kevin going to try and age up when he can. Move to the Cav Semi. If he does, he can ship in some war wagons to play that, and then the game is over. But Ungers, he's a Russian enjoy, and he, it's, it's not about diving in versus Germany. It's about trying to strangle your opponent. But the problem is, there's two hunts. There's a gold mine really close to the town centre as well. Um, resources here, not an issue for Kevin. And with things with a gold mine as well, there's no problem in training like 20 Ulans in second age because you still have the best part of a thousand gold to age up then two thousand gold to play with in the third age so there's no real risk of um gold starving here uh, from joe's point of view so he's been very comfortable uh oh, 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 oh i've seen it i've seen it who doesn't the love 20, some fireworks 20, the 20 ulan into the uh fireworks stun that could oh. be uh, we've all we've all had a good laugh at it. Did you see the clip of Hazard? Oh he yes, literally oh, yes. pissed himself watching Kaiser Klein getting stunned and just. <laughs> yeah. and, it, and it was it was Aztec Skull Knights as yeah, well. Yeah, it was Kaiser. It was, Kaiser. It was Kaiser into, just oh. doing the Skull Knights, and it was it was just magical. It was absolutely magical. So that's not going to actually take too long to come in. It's almost a quarter done already. So maybe he's just going to have that in the back of his in in the, in the back seat and wait for the perfect timing of that. And yeah, hopefully we'll see something really cool with that. Russia obviously being weak to Cav, we all know this, so that's what Kevin's decided to start with. They are going to be able to make okay, mincemeat um, of this amount of musketeers. Un Ungers is Ungers in danger and now losing essentially everything, the game, everything. Um, he's backing out now. It's a good decision. If you stay there, trying to siege that TP even longer. All Kevin has to do is call Minutemen and then just snare the um, Ullans, and then the, all his musks are dead. I mean, the, 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 the entire momentum is just killed. There's a safe age up behind. We do see something being researched here from the native post. I want to say it might be a military drummer. Royal, Royal card, card games. games. Oh, randomly sent a card. So, yeah. That's pretty good. It's even better when you have a deck tailored so you, you can only send good cards. But usually, usually it sends the lowest, worst card. I bet you it's going to be Eco Theory here. <laughs> which wouldn't be terrible. Theory. Which wouldn't be terrible. Well, it, for, for the price we paid for it, it is. I think yeah, it's going to be Eco Theory or 600 gold. That, that's, that is my um, guess. Okay. Um, bows are being shipped, so it's not going to be that one. I mean, it would be Don't interesting. Be. It would be... <laughs> just, it, ima just imagine uh, if it sends eight bows yeah, and cancels it, your shipment. Yeah, You'd be so annoyed. Yeah. I would. I probably would have liked to have waited till nine, uh, eight crossbowmen, till this car, uh, this tech has actually come in before you send that. Because that's that could be what it sends. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what it sends. Oh, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? Oh, you're 600 right. gold. No, it's 700, isn't it? No, 600. Oh, yes, of course it is. Yeah, 600 gold, which which is really great. <laughs> well, no, well, you say that, but I, I, I don't know the price. I think I think Kevin's just paid more for less. I, I'll need to check. Evo, your, your chance now to redeem yourself in oh, chat. Go find out the know. price of that for me, because I think, I think Kevin's just got shortchanged. Oh, 125 each. Really? Oh, that's wow, that's great value what? then. That's great value. Wait, 125 each res to send to send a card. Not even give you the card, but send a card. Oh, that's worth it. I, if I that's... was Kevin, I would be running down here as fast as I can to protect the. Yeah, okay. So he's backing up. So he saw him because you want to protect this big butt. Also, he all he needs to do is get one military drummer out now from that train post, and he's very happy to play yes, on. Yes. Yes. The, and, and one he's military got the drummer. Macro for you... it. He's got the macro for it. And these dops, oh, he's, so I think he's taking into these dops because he's going to use the firework to stun and that's going to allow oh. the dops to get in there and tag the other units and just absolutely decimate everything. I even feel sorry for Ungers is playing Russia here. Like maybe like this is the time we like bring out, like you undo the rules. You say, I'm, I'm, I don't care about the rules. I'm playing Italy this game. Brings out like the dog's dinner in terms of sieves. But oh, Russian musks, fireworks done into drummer boosted Ulan dop. Z move. Oh my god, that we're. One thing to but mention is—is is, is he hitting it? Oh, he's, he is. No, but... He is just about. Yeah. Oh, he needs to get back, back up. No. Oh. I think I think he's just about got enough time to send it in. It's the thing is, 
it doesn't it oh, doesn't yeah, no. actually the big button yeah. doesn't work and it doesn't the countdown doesn't uh, continue if it's being sieged i believe so yeah it's really right. if, if ungers was aware of this he would literally just be keeping a couple of musketeers sieging it but he's decided not to do that and kevin is actually he, wow, he's really taking into age two here and he's going for some uh, irish musketeers which are quite lackluster but if they are allowed to get the promotions they will do they will they will do really well and it, oh, it's all gonna come down it's all gonna come down to royal fireworks Minute please tell well me when he does this just imagine even set the wagons to bring boards tanking just a little bit he's been forced to take this fight it's minimum being called in irish coat behind but i have a feeling the entire the, the entire fight's done before fireworks comes in this is like the doctor are in there getting us ready to go but actually if if the cavalry are already there, there's the Irish Brigadiers, and they can get some free promotions with the Stun's army. Three, two, one. Here we go, guys. Fireworks inbound. Is he going to do fireworks? Whoa. It would just... Oh, it would just be so perfect. Do it, do it, do Come it. On, Kevin. Don't do it. <laughs> That's such a pro gamer move here, having the, the a god power up your sleeve, but saving it because you've already crushed the fights. What he a god here from Gavin. He what could, a god. He, could he didn't stun, need it. He, could he, could he didn't stun, need it. He could have stunned the Strelets to stop them going near the blockhouses and get let allow Most them to improved to player, Ungers? Nah. Give it to <laughs> Kevin. It's definitely not over yet. He's still got to take down both of these blockhouses. Oh, it is. Kind of. We're nearly there. Um, still needs to kind of um, hope you train one minute. Drummer get a batch of five. Husk going. Some dops coming as well. Because you, you, you can't just half commit to this push now. He's committed to the push. So, yeah, there's your landing meter thing. And with. 700 gold now being sent by the home city here from Kevin. That's going to be a nice little reinforcement batch of resources. Some crazy gameplay coming on here. Oh, I, I'm so excited. Uh, I can't contain myself. I'm going to have to change my trousers and my boxer shorts after this game. Um, I'm going to use Hanover more for that card because 125 of each res for that cut for a random, even if it's a random card, that's still, that's just too good. Because I know that, like, was it the Habsburg is 250 each res just to get a plus one shipment. And you're thinking, oh, that's actually kind of expensive to tech this is just it's not even because you don't have to wait for the ship it just turns up it just turns there we go there it is <laughs> and now he's backing up with the cab oh that was oh it was that, was, that was so underwhelming yeah. it, 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 it is it is it is it is it's too good if it's any longer than that but it's just too short to really enjoy it but yeah <laughs> we got to see it anyway <laughs> we got to see it kevin what a legend what an absolute legend and that brings it to 2-1 Really, was, Germany, really well played. was Germany still on their home gold mine? Because that is basically the biggest decider of this matchup, I think, is the lack of gold starving. Yeah, it was still on his gold mine, so. Damn. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. what we're going to do now is um, we'll just take a quick look at the stats. And then what I'm going to do is I might skip to map five because there's definitely going to be a map six now. And I will, whilst we're doing the next map, I'll do the poll because I, I want guys to have a couple of minutes to decide. So all resources, pretty close actually. Um, just really, really dominant age two play. Unger's just getting too desperate and diving in. And yeah, what a game. That was probably my, that was my most fun game, I think, so far. How uh, dare you, Lone? How I dare know, you do I know. Count, mate? Village account, so Village Account. Jump's a really cool map. So we'll let, oh, we'll, let oh. we'll let Twitch decide um, oh, but, what happens but, there. But, but Punjab is like taking your girl on a Friday night and not going out for dinner and just saying, do you want to go to bed early 8 p.m. and just go straight to sleep? Like, <laughs> it, in, the, in this but it's bonkers such matchup a classic. we've got here, it's such a in classic. this bonkers matchup, we've gone for the most standard of standard. And I appreciate that. We can have a really... We, we can have a really, really simple game. Or sorry, a very really standard game. We can focus on the gameplay. And actually, I'm really excited about this matchup because this is the... Dun, dun, dun. Harrison versus Shake. Grudge match matchup where Shake thinks the China's busted and Harrison thinks the Spain's busted. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, the classic, the classic. By the way, Twitch chat saying, uh, what about Horn or aka Horny? I was actually very tempted no, to put that I... into the, uh, the, the map pool for, for the one we've just, we've just picked. But I decided, I, I, in the end, I decided not to because I don't think very many people would like it. But no. um, yeah, so Kevin playing as China and Unger's playing as Spain. So... Harrison, I'd be interested to know your thoughts because I, 
I I play both of these sieves and I play both of these sieves to quite a decent level, but I'm I, I'm far from being an expert at either of them. I do mm. think it's I think it's pretty close, and I've seen both civilizations do well. I've seen both. I feel like in this matchup, Spain have to be the aggressor. They need to yep. use that really early fast fortress tempo, and they need to get the five lancers, the four lancers, the two falconets, and they need to do as much damage as they can to China. Whilst if you if China is able to survive, then they they kind of scale better than Spain. What do you think? I think you've hit that one absolutely correct. China can't really push Spain age two. Spain are somewhat unrushable in the second age, thanks to seven rods, four hus age apple crossbows, minute men, dogs, explorer, and all that good stuff. But um Spain do want to be on the front foot here. They could try and do the soldadi sit in base and go late, but that just plays to China's um um favor anyway pepco's has actually won so we'll be seeing that next game very good okay cool um but i think with spain here if they go for like say more of a standard fast fortress into aggression they can play card roulette with china mm. china yes. has to respond to what spain does but china has has to if they want to play it safe question mark they have to see what the cards come in and then send the correct cards and wait 40 seconds for it to turn up or you can bl play blind card roulette, where you think your opponent's going to send falconets. You send in hand mortars, and then nine lances turn up, and you're like, well, the game's over. So it's it's risky, it's dynamic, it's explosive. I expect them to see Spain to go aggressive here. I, so one time I did say to Shake, let's do a better seven, keep switch, switching the sieves over. I think that Spain is favoured this matchup, and uh, Shake to this day would always say that China's a broken civilization, and I think half the community <laughs> would also say that China's a broken civilization, but. Uh, I mean, that's a different uh, conversation. Ask, ask, ask Sheikh what civilization isn't broken. Uh, broken is more, more <laughs> a better question for him. <laughs> well, appar apparently, Brits have never been an S tier sieve. It's never been a top oh, three. Oh, get sieve out of it! Get patches. out of it! Get never. out of it! Never. <laughs> apparently, we, we, apparently, we've all been brainwashed by Lionheart and his lack of game knowledge. <laughs> oh my! Yeah, my influence apparently. <laughs> uh, anyways, I mean, go on. What was, what was the line? Hacker polite is not so you, it's, you just said move, you have to micro it or something like that. <laughs> it doesn't that. spray everything down, you have to micro it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is a classic, I have to say. Um, Sorry, I'm going to, to time out Passy here. It says, two most biased guys here, or gays, two most Brits, <laughs> love to hear it. So, uh, Yo, what's up, Passy? Sorry, you're going to you get can, yeeted. You can sit in time out for a little bit there. Shake, <laughs> shake, you're more than welcome here. Welcome, my friend. You're, you're a good man. Um, yeah, that's that's brilliant. So uh, back to the game. So what we've got from Kevin, if we take a quick look at his deck, uh, we do see that he's gone for the Northern Refugees, which is going to give him two villagers, and he's gone for T Export second card. Now, again, I'm going to ask your opinion on this, Harrison, because you yep. play a lot more China yep. than I do. Yep. What's I your do. thoughts on both of these cards, and which order do you think it should be sent in? So the standard was two vils tds for a long time until people realize a russian consulate is just essentially unpunishable and a bit broken so they've kind of reduced they've increased the price of the, the blockhouse over time and they've reduced the export income of the, that card as well to the point that if you send russia the tds now you will be delayed in getting the blockhouse but i think with spain here going for a timing push i don't think it's critical i don't think they're going to go for a super fast push so it doesn't really matter. You can go Russian consulates and get the blockhouse down time. So maybe for this matchup and build order, this card order is right. But we have seen players like Julian go TDs first into early consulate, cheaper vils. Skip the two vils. But on the map like Punjab, you have lots of livestock. You have the goats, you have the yaks, you have the um, villages. So you can kind of sacrifice a little bit of economy here by saving one card and kind of re recovering that via livestock to age up at the same time, but with plus one cards. And I think in a card roulette versus Spain, the actual extra card there is really useful. And that extra card could either be a three units or just squeeze in 700 wood and then still have a card to send units on the third age, which is kind of like a really like an all-rounder, solid, great play. So I think at the moment on this map, um, I probably would actually say it is, it is China favored. I know, I know, I'll put my hand up. Okay, that's. It'll take, it take a moment for you to accept that one, but yeah. I think I've come to. I think I've come to exception here. I accept my fate. No, I'm glad. But... For that. I'm glad. I'm glad you mentioned that because I have to say, like Julian has has shown, I am a, a T export first card enjoyer. 
I do like going for tea export first, and I feel like the, the Northern Refugees yeah. are almost almost pointless. However, Kevin is a better China player than myself, yeah. so uh, we'll yeah. have to see how this pans out. And one thing to mention is I did see Spain going Our heavy first. on wood, and they're going for a, well, a yeah. Hazard, maybe a Hazard semi we're going to see here. So first card is uh, going to be this is, five bills into 700 This is wood. not, as far as I know, this is not really how you want to play into China, but because Kevin's not expecting this play, Ungus might be able to catch the blockhouse wagon with his pants down because it does take time to come in. I think that should be sending now and appearing on the floor. So he might have just missed it. Uh, it's being built now, yeah. Okay, so he has missed it, but... Wait, is that I, actually I a pipe shipment? Out. What? So if we have a look at Kevin, now the only he's way to, he must have it. done... So he did scout yeah, this scout really it, yeah. nice scouting oh, by yeah, Kevin yeah, yeah, yeah. there. So he's gone for the early Quang apartment. However, has that sacrificed his 700 gold? It has. So he's kind of going to be stuck. However, what it looks like he's doing is he's kind of just manually micro, uh, micro yeah. his villagers to, to go for the edge of it anyway. And that's going to slow him down. However... The Hazard, arguably the Hazards would slow him down even more and potentially lose villagers. So I really like this play by Kevin here. He's gone very defensive and he's still going to be able to age up at a relatively decent time. Yeah, Vivid's calling the Mito FF here where the Mito FF was put one villager on the Summer Palace to build it and then leave all villagers off it. So it builds very, very slowly. But every single vill is on food and gold. You age up, you send in 700 wood and... You drop your wonder to age up about like 25 30 seconds later because you get some resources back through the not having to build your age one wonder but you're still slower but the idea is you get this extra card and i think the whole julian idea is the strength of julian's build is not because age one is like oh your tea leaves and fast you get the blockhouse down safe and all that it's because you save the extra cards to do something useful with it in the third age and that's the critical point and I think that's kind of where we're going to see this as well from Kevin, because he's not sending gold. He might lose some vills here, some hustles, just some good baiting. That's some good bait. Uh, we don't see dogs here from Explorer. Dogs, hard, well, essentially hard counter pikemen, or at least soft counter them. The dogs are essentially strong in this situation. But this is full age two here from Ungers, and I'm kind of, uh, kind of worried, because this is a time actually where China wants to be looking to drop down that wonder, switch into Brick Consulate to, to call in the... Um, yeah, the intervention musketeers as soon as the age up. So I want him to be switching that consulate now. And the thing is, British consulate, fortress age, um, disciples, monk versus age two, pike, husk, musk, unupgraded from Spain. Not a massive amount. I'm fearing it. I'm not. I'm not a massive endurer of this. Yeah, this is is uh, Ungers is almost playing like how Brits would play against China, and is who's going for like a musk husk composition, mm. and then obviously he's going to be sending in. Uh, 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 pikeman i imagine we'll probably see some rods coming in next as well so he's, he's gonna have a timing here he's taking yeah. down a village which is really good which is really yeah. really good and uh it's, it's all gonna be about how kevin can respond to this yeah. in age three what units is he gonna be able to make and he hasn't got any tempo because he's aged up with the tower now this will be really effective the longer the game goes on however he's gonna need some units out really really quickly Maybe we need to see some walls, we need to see some pikes, we need to see some skirmishes. He needs something to be able to deal with this composition. And uh, I think Unger's big trump card here is going to be the more cards he sends is going to benefit this card, House of Trastamara. Oh now, God. this is this essentially each card, it will make your age up cheaper. So he's now sending it in as well. That's exactly what we... He's, I'm five head coming oh, in now. Great, great. And, and another fast age card and fast sending card. Like, that's class. However, how much is that going to benefit? Near, he's nowhere near aging up, so it's he's a shame. Not. He should have sent gold in first. So it's made his age up cheaper by about 400 resources there, which is, which is a nice amount. However, he's had to use a lot of age two cards. That obviously costs an, uh, a card itself. And does he really want to age here? Is that what he wants to do? Uh, does he want to keep the tempo in age two? So this could be a bad decision, but he, there is a lot of hus there. And uh, there's not a lot of units out for Kevin. He's now going to be housed yeah. again. So, 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 so Kevin, still, Kevin still has double, double minute men. And, well, the thing is, he's still Russian constant. I don't know. Okay, he's switching now, but it takes a minute to switch. Like... The thing is with Russian Consulate, you should basically, as soon as you get the Brockhouse done, train like your age up Vils, like get five in queue and then switch straight away. You cannot get, you cannot get caught waiting in for a British uh, Consulate timing. He's, he's had to go Archibald's years because his Brit Consulate wasn't in and he needed units, but he doesn't 
he doesn't need skirmishers here. He needs musketeers because of this whole... Remember, skirms heavily nerfed versus heavy cavalry here. So must cuss playstyles very strong at the moment. So I feel I feel that... Uh, if one, if Ungus wanted to, he could have walked in. He could have walked through that, but he's going to age up and get the uh, cheaper techs, and he's just, he's just playing it slow and smart, really. Like it's, I like it. it yeah, I do like yeah. it. I, I hear what you're saying about diving in, but obviously that, like you said earlier about how to lose a game in ten seconds, that is a way he could lose this game. Instead, what he's done, he's decided to do as much infrastructure damage as possible. He's already taken down two villages. He took down the blockhouse, and he took down the TP at the bottom of the map. He's now about to take the third village down, and that is a lot of resources wasted for Kevin. So, I like what he's done here. He's done a lot of damage. He's achieved a lot. He's forced a response from Kevin, and now what he's doing is aging up behind it, and he's going to be able to get all those veteran techs. He's going to be able to get all of those juicy age three cards, two falconets, five lancers, etc. And he's going to—he's just going to out eco and out tempo Kevin here. So it's going to be interesting to see how mm. Kevin responds to this. So I think the thing with Kevin here is he, he did that play of like trying to save a card, but the, the card he saved was 700 gold and, and then spent it on 700 wood instead. And they kind of just didn't have that shipment momentum in the third age. Like he, he sent in um, Archibald Sears, now he's sending in the intervention. Realistically, he never needed to send in the Pikeman because he had a summer pass batch which were trained, but he had the, the Monk, he had Disciples, and Pike Minutemen. Like, China has Pike Minutemen. That's something to worth consider. Yes, it will slow the age up down a little bit, but you get the age up in time. You you, you push away the five Hus. I think then China enters the third age with a little bit more momentum in that situation. But he's played it safe, and I think he's paying for the safety play there because he's just down in all kinds of momentum. We see Vet Hus in, expecting to see some sort of Cav combat very shortly in behind because you've got enough units to make an upgrade now and there's a big maybe... timing here from ungers and he's got that veteran hus tech in if i was kevin i'd really want to hang around these trees and make it as as frustrating for the cav as possible but it looks like he's just decided to back up and this is a huge mass the lancers are in there as well mm -hmm. they're just going to melt these skirmishers and pikes if they get if they get on properly but he's backing up he's backing up yeah. the, the minute, minutemen come minute in now pops. we do have intervention musketeers for the for the chinese army here as well so it's not too bad Skirms getting some distance. Most of the army here from uh, Spain is heavy infantry, so Arquebus is getting some decent exchange of value. And yeah, with Bunkers backing out quite a bit, he has lost a decent amount of units. So, so far, again, still looking in favour of Bunkers, but actually it's giving China to kind of solidify the army, cover up the weakness points. I'm expecting the next card here from China to be the Changdao shipments, or I don't expect he has Keshex or Pikes, but he could... No, he can't afford the Manchu, but it's going to be anti-cab for sure. Yeah, I think that was a really good trade for Kevin. However, I would be worried about him going too far forward here. He has a lot of cab on his own, and that is a big, juicy lump of anti-cavalry there. So, Ungers may have missed his moment there. I, I, it's going to be interesting to see what... He, he's deciding to go for more cavalry. He's making goons, which I guess is okay, but... I would probably prefer Rods, to be honest with you. His anti-cav is not looking very healthy at the moment. I mean, essentially his anti-cav at this stage is his own cavalry in a sense. There are quite a lot of weak hazards. Like, there's one here with only one HP, another another with about 20 HP. So that army could get melted if, there, if enough anti... You know, if pikemen and enough anti-cav were to just kind of let loose on them. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one yeah. runs. It's worth China here cutting all military production, cutting bills, cutting everything, selling all the food and wood possible to get a thousand gold to call in Manchus. Because they would definitely get value in this situation. There's not too many skirms to try and work down those units from range. Um, expecting Changdao's and just regular unit production to come in behind. So let's have check, check on China's point of view. He's actually kiting forward with skirmishers trying to get some volleys off. But maybe he's trying to bait them in between two villages for a cheeky Changdao pop from the village. We've got to see. Can we see China's point of view? Nothing. Oh, maybe the ship's already turned in. Um, and Ungers is going good. for it. And there's some villagers yeah. that are going to get caught in the crossfire there. This is going to be a difficult one. Ungers really aggressive here. Just, just diving. He's in. not pulling the villagers away. He's just tanking them. He's not, he's not. He's not also fighting at the same time. He's just like, just, just exchanging skirm fire, but not committing. The trees with the hussars. This is awkward. But it's a decent amount of um, redcoats here. I think he actually has got a red, another batch of musketeers. Ooh. Disciples soon be on the field. There's a lot of stuff. And actually, There's China stuff is everywhere. China things here. I think this is going to be a China victory 
Everything's working. Meters wow. Meters range. The cover where they want to be. They're not, they're not in melee. Musketeers on top of the Hussars. The oh. Hussars not Lancers, and they're not doing much damage. This is a colossal cleanup. The China's classic China death ball, baby. It. The classic. Well played, Kevin. That was a really great fight. It's not over yet, but this is the classic China death ball. And maybe Ungers just picked the wrong moment and was too aggressive. And that was an absolutely great micro. I was a little bit worried about these villagers, but he was using it as bait. And it just, it was one of those, one of those fights where it just, every, every unit just kind of fell into the right place for Kevin. And unfortunately, Ungers was caught out of place. And that was really well played by Kevin, just baiting him in between these villagers, between this tree line here. And it just worked out really, really well for Kevin. And that's what we call the defender's advantage. That, I don't think I've seen a better fight in this game since the famous fights of Pampas. What was it? A Mex was it a Malta defense versus Brit or a Spain defense versus Brit <laughs> versus Passy? Seventeen Musketeers <laughs> fell at the hands of two Falconets. It was brutal. Yeah, that but was that, savage. I think that that fight there tops it. That was a heroic victory there for the Chinese and should be in his way to take a forward position in this game. And I think he, he can roll this up into a victory later as the game goes on. He's now able to send his upgrade cards to the territorial combats, the repelling volley, the the spider cav armor double face armor and uh yeah that's most of the sars are running around the blockhouse no running around the village in the trees they just couldn't get on and because they weren't lancer cavalry and they, they didn't have multipliers versus infantry that like hussars are more tanking cavalry they're not damage dealers and most mm -hmm. but most of the army there was high damage there from kevin I agree. There are two Falconets could be a trump card for Ungers here, but I just feel like Kevin, yeah, he's just got way too much cav at this stage, and, and I'm not sure how Ungers is going to be able to protect those Falconets. The Death Ball just continues to get larger and larger. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is a patch where China have arguably been nerfed quite hard. However, you know, it's holding its own. He's holding, Kevin's holding his own with China right now, and yeah, going to show that China is still going to be a force to be reckoned with. I do feel like Ungers, he kept going for the north side of this map. He kept running Cav round here. He kept running his army around here. I feel like if he ran to the south of the map where there was kind of... Uh, Kevin is more eco-centered. Maybe he could have had a much better go of it there. Maybe he wouldn't have got caught in so many tree lines. And maybe he could have caught more villagers. But, you know, he took he took a chance and uh, unfortunately yeah. it just didn't pay off for him. Stake is praying that Ungers is going to win. I think he's bet quite a lot of um, channel points on the... Spanish victory here, but the problem is Kevin at this moment in time has an unkillable army. I think it's the phrase. So I want I want to say he's waiting for the summer pass army and then one more batch. Surely he'd be going out after this because his macro is actually quite good. He's spent most of his resources. He's invested. Maybe he's waiting for one more army tech card. But Ungus is going for another fight. Two falconets. Yeah, very nice. But it's just so many units here from mm. Kevin. He can just he can just walk in and attack that from range. Beaches from range as well. Um, that is not a lot of units from Ungers. The thing to mention, though, he is on a lot, substantially amount of more villagers. So he does have the eco advantage, even with yeah. the Wander, even with the Porcelain Tower. Uh, Ungers is still up in eco. However, so he, does he need to be aggressive here? He probably doesn't realize he's up in villager count. Uh, you know, it's difficult to know because of the score. However, you know, the score, he is, is he's still in it, you know, and he's kind of gaining. Um, so I'm not sure he needs to be overly aggressive here. He's trying to do some more damage to the villagers, but that's really not going to do as much damage as, as it did at the beginning of the game. So, yeah, I mean, he is using these Falconets well. He's putting it in this tree line where it's going to be really difficult for Cav to just die through. And he's got a lot of rods, so um, Kevin really needs to be careful of that. It does look like he's trying to angle a really good position let's hope he's not being too desperate here the cab are fishing for it but there's a lot of rods this is really nice control by ungers and is kevin picking it's a awkward bad isn't it it's is so awkward this fight here for china like he's trying to make he's just gonna take heavy losses i think he just the hand in can just take everything on here he's, he's happy for the losses from the falconers i think it's very smart when you realize that you just don't need to you don't need to overprice falcons you can just deal with the other stuff and just let the falcons be there and and yeah, it's just too much army here to deal with. Yeah. He needs to commit the cav now. He's actually taking five, but running areas, they are 40% range resist, so they actually are holding quite nicely, but the middle buckles, the facts go down, and again, this is now Ungus having to rebuild the army from scratch. Um, Kevin already got an established army, more XP, more upgrades to be shipped, and then the game's been called. Really well played, and that was Good about... Fight, it Good was fight there. 
Uh, that was about as well as Ungus could have asked for, and he did some great micro in here. Just really good situational, aware uh, situational, situational awareness. However, Kevin just... <laughs> The China Death Ball, he just had too much stuff. He could just waste as many pikes as possible. Changed out Swordsman. And, um, yeah, just paid off really well for him. Uh, really well played by Kevin. It was looking really bad for him at one point. And it was really looking like Ungers was really going to take control of the entire map. But China, and I think the Porcelain Tower was a really, really smart age up for Kevin. Because that just allowed him to replace the wood that Ungers was taking down with the infrastructure. So, yeah, really Can well we played by both. Can we look at that military population? From those suffering from nervous suspicion, close your eyes now. So military population. Let's have a quick look. Oh, oh my oh, god! Oh, savage! Oh, That's damn. savagery! Absolutely. That was an absolutely brilliant fight for Kevin. Like you could not have asked for a sweeter nut than that. So yeah, oh, really well played. Oh my That's yeah, it was all it was all going so well up into that point. That's the thing. It was all going so well up to that point. Ouch. I mean, something something is you know a very familiar sight. China being less resources, but you know the whole point is that they get those unit shipments out and they they count a lot of uh, well, of resources. Okay, so, so 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 remember when you're looking at these graphs, you say less resources, but from Fortress Age onwards, the economy, the rate of income of resources was essentially the same. The gradients are pretty much the same, mm -hmm. and yeah, it dips off at the end because of the uh, vil kills, but. Uh, both players essentially had this access to the same amount of resources after that big fight, and just and it's like oh, the recovery. It was never going to recover that deficit. I think was the phrase. But um... great game, absolutely great game. Um, so yeah, now wow, turning to two two. Gone. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say oh, this prediction is like the highlight of the stream, like the most tense the game's ever going to be. <laughs> but <laughs> we got Malta. Do 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 do. Oh, fix gun, fix gun, do 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 do, and depo depots, na 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 na. Um, this is gonna be this is a really cool matchup. It's not it's not something you see every day. Ethiopia being one of the Africa sieves, very very rarely picked to be honest. The Africa sieves, but they are actually pretty damn strong. I have seen Kevin's Ethiopia played many a time, and he he is good with them. I wouldn't say it's one of his main sieves, but it'd be interesting to see what uh he's gonna come up with here. Now, Kevin's playing at the north of the map, so we'll, we'll keep a close eye on what he does. Now, the opponent is Malto, another sieve you don't often see very much. I, I, I explained, I was speaking to Harrison the other day, and I think Malto is one of those civilizations. They are, a, they are a good civilization. They're not weak by any stretch. However, they have a very high skill ceiling, so they're... To play at a top level, they're very difficult. However, if you can play with them very well, then they're a very good sieve. I think that's a good way of explaining them. What do you think, Harrison? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I can use that excuse to cover my shortcomings with the sieve and <laughs> always getting clapped with them, but I, I always people say that, oh, Malt is so good, they're so broken, like a top three sieve. I'm sorry, I, I just, sorry guys, I just can't see it. I've, I've tried to see it. I just can't quite get to that level of what thinking they're above most, if not every sieve. Like, for example, like I think Germany just trashes on Malta. They just, Germany has that m nice momentum at that right point of the game to do some massive damage, as an example. I got a funny story about this matchup. I was watching Mr. Bowen Joyer play mm -hmm. a couple of games, and I thought, oh, this is good. I might take the strategy on the ladder, which is essentially market start, um, age up, 700 wood, 600 wood, double racks, go aggressive. And I thought, oh, this will be fine. And I think, I can't remember what I get. I think it's Sepoy Guy on the ladder. And I'm like, ah, oh, Sepoy Guy, he's a good player, but um, I should be able to compete with him, let's say. Had a really good age one, good momentum going. And I trained 10 crossbows from my double forward racks, moved in. I think I might have picked off one villager, put some pressure. Feeling comfortable with myself. And I just got cleaned up by show tails and I could never have recovered. And I just sat there, like, stunned silence, just contemplating life. <laughs> so I got embarrassed hard. Like, it was, it was like trying to copy, like, Bowen Joy had been like a god on the ladder and just got sat down so quickly. It was, it was, I was a... Uh, it was, it was a moment of reflection that was. Yeah, so Shotter Warriors are an interesting unit. They, they're they kind of considered pretty damn good at the moment. 
However, they were getting buffed, and I think um, the devs re- listened to um, people being a bit worried that they were going to get overbuffed because there's a card that uh, increases Sh- them. Show tells are insane, and, and yeah, but they've been there's, nerfed. There's... Their their hit points has been nerfed now as well. So I think that was a yeah. smart play by nerfing their hit points at the beginning. They still get buffed with the card. However, their initial shot of warriors are slightly worse, which I think is a, a nice change. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people are saying like there's, there's no point to make a Romo heavy cavalry when you can just make Shotel Warriors, and I think that point kind of still stands because of the the speed, the path in the obstruction radius that the Shotels had. They can just slip in, dive in there, and get on top of the units they want to kill. And, and, and because they're shock lances as well, they have multipliers versus all infantry, they can just dive onto skirmishers and, and also trade relatively well versus musketeers. So it's it's a really decent engagement. There. I'm just looking at the multi deck. Can you just put it back up again for me, please? Yep, please. Interesting double wood crates. He does have eight pikes in his shoes. So five sentinels. Just one upgrade in age two. He doesn't have he does have trips to Jerusalem. Pardon me. Third age he has a uh, trip to Rhodes, which is very good. That's 15 dots on five commandery, but three dots per commandery. Fixed guard. No forts. Zebek has refrigeration. Probably does not need that. No thousand gold or Viterosia. Which I think is a bit questionable. And then in the fourth age, there's a lot of cards they could have. One of them being stick 2k woods. He does not have advanced fortifications. Uh, has the gen times over 24 crossbows. And yeah, I mean, you could say, you could other say other cards like uh, three culverins, um, Sicilian supply, maybe something like uh, two forts, but they're not as, they're not as significant. Um, Ethiopia deck, I don't know what that is, so move on. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think um, Ungers is obviously going for German tongue, and Ungers being Ungers, it's, it, his deck isn't like I don't know if you want to call it a D deck. His his deck is very vanilla in the sense of Ungers has a has a certain style, and he's got a very good style, but he he's very uh, almost vanilla. Like he 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 plays the vanilla sieves, that's what he's known for. So he's he's gonna play, I think, very standard, quite standard, and quite greedy. So if he's not being aggressive, he'll go very eco heavy. So uh, German tongue come in at four minutes thirty, which is which is pretty nice. He's gonna put that commandary quite far, um, right next to his hospital as well, and opening with pikes. Maybe we'll see him go for the TPs here. So gonna be some. He, although he's going greedy, he's also gonna. That, that's also some really good early aggression. It reminds me of Gimmick, well, who was one of the best mortal players you know I've seen yeah, play. So there's 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 no way you train villagers, settler wagons, steel traps, and a batch of five pikes without sending wood. He's just sending. Uh, was it the next? He's sending weaker court constructions here. So unless Ungus has got some godly macro, his economy is gonna be very stretched and tight, and it will be a bit of giving and trading in terms of what he's trained with his trained settler wagons or his trained pikemen but i can see why he wants pikes for the show tails and for the um tps and for the speed but he can always return run away if he sees gas kenyas and train uh crossbows so the pikes there are safe but he's it just everything there is just pretty stretched he's doing a good job of it though and i think this is i think this strategy here what Ungus is playing is the prime strategy in the sense of German tongue, I think, is pretty much to go to most games, and he's got three. He's got three town centers with 2.5 eco theory as well, so he's pretty happy. And he now he's just covering himself with a couple of units here and there, so it's all good. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna do this on on a map, then it, you know, it, why not do it on this oh, map? Oh, pardon because... me, I completely forgot. Yeah, I think I keep. For, I think I forgot this game. It's very important to remember the in, the importance of those extra crates in age one for speeding up. Stuff like uh, Malta getting yeah. their, 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 their two town centre cards in age one going a little bit fast, if you know what I mean. So I think Unger's here. I noticed him playing with um, unknown maps as well in Norwich 20 and just general supremacy. But with, with some sieves, the more you get out of the economy, the more you can put in and then the more you can get out. And that's the same with treasures as well. The more treasures you can get, the more of an insane start you can get, the more you can invest that to a better growth as the game goes on some civs like france well, i mean they can ship cdbs they can train cdbs but they're at that point their kind of economic potential is rather limited they're always going to go for steel trap straight away oh there's a couple show tails on crossbows but they're not too interested and i think lunga's actually got away with keeping his crossbows alive there that there was an opportunity to pick them up but yeah back to the multi four it's lunga's position is a really good position at the moment and yeah, just because the start was good and you can just keep investing into that momentum. 
Yeah, I'm not sure what his response are. Those pikes seem like they're a bit of a problem for Kevin, and I, I believe the only way that they can get a skirmisher or their, their normal skirmishers is through a card. However, it looks like he's getting by that by going for some Somali uh, militia. Um, going to cost some influence. He has teched heavily into influence. He used the card that gives you 200 influence per card. So, uh, but Kevin definitely like not looking to end this in you know within the next five minutes. He definitely wants to use that as a as, a, as an, a, an investment going forward. So there's definitely going to be some potential big plays with a lot of influence later on in the game. Now he can use that influence on a lot of different things. He's decided to use it on cannon eight cannoneers here, which is going to be a, a, a really strong way to deal with Expo Pike. We've all seen what Abbas Gunners can do against this, and cannoneers essentially being an Abbas Gunner type of unit. So that's going to be a really nice play here. Used with these shotter warriors just to, just to snare everything. I think we're going to see some absolute savage attack right here. It yeah, all you, depends. You, 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 know, you know the phrase of you can lose, a, you can't win in five seconds, but you can lose in five seconds. There's potential for that here with motor but he's got the economy he's got the infrastructure you can just pull back and depot mid map and buy time but can is going to pop there's still show tells and they're going to rinse through the the infantry here and and go for the, the snare Kanye's now Oh, everything attack. Get the snare on. The cannoneers can they to absolutely destroy the pipe. Remember, Somali, Somali to Rude's like 22, 20 range skirms. They're so strong. 22 range versus oh. the pikes. And they, yeah, Uncas is running away and now he's in trouble. He needs to have re -mass. But the thing is, I think Ungus is in the classic mortar trap where he wants to try and age up and doesn't know what to do. So he might panic and train Sentinel Huss. But he's, yeah, he's aged up. He's trapped. He's, he's pushed and he's aged with no depot defense prepared his explorers on the other side of the map so no fixed gun being uh, uh fixed he's just yeah he's just making um pike when he's calling in a hospitality to try and age up faster but that means there's no age up shipment so yeah this is this is actually getting really this is getting really squeaky bum time now this is this is getting tasty the scores are almost identical and it's all going to be about how much damage kevin can do right now uh, i mean he's got I, the cannoneers yeah, I... he's got the skirms he should be able to take care of this army all five consulate husk, which would be oh, real veteran. And there's is... no anti there's no anti cav here, but he does have the show tails, but the pikes on top as well. And the agent oh, that's a great that's a hold. That's a hold. That is oh, a great hold. Is. Now you know why he was being so aggressive to keep this commandary alive, because that's exactly what he wanted to happen. Really, really mm. great pop and well played by Ungers now. Uh, again, yeah. the game has just swung again into Ungers' favour. So we're gonna see how Kevin responds to this. Really nice. That's, that's just that's just a multi bonus of auto teching um, commander units on the Egypt and remember the ten percent combat bonus that they have because they're consulate based units. So that was just insane power spike. And you always remember you can train cavalry in transition to an age. You can train other units like uh, pike bow uh, or even dop musk whatever um, to kind of complement that as well. And that was a good uh, return on investment. So fair play to that. And the points looking pretty decent. The Explorer still in around the awkward point. Uh, I'd love to see next card fix gun right in the middle of the map and just secure the middle presence and maybe put pressure from range on some of the buildings, but just to kind of shore up that defense. Kevin in a looking like a bit of an awkward situation. I, he he's got no cows, is he? He's out. He's out of influence. He's out of uh, castle. He's, ah, he's going for so big he's Benny, going but... for the big Benny. And uh, that's probably going to give him enough gold to almost instantly age. So it looks like he is. Kevin's also going to be taken to try and age up here. But it's going to take a while for that to come in. It's going to take a while for the age up. He does have the option of fast aging as well. There's a tech that gives him, uh, I think it costs about 500 gold and will allow, allow him to age up fast. Similar to how Mexico have a church tech as well that lets you age up quicker. So I, I don't know if he's already used that. I can't see if it's uh, been used. I will just double check. Uh, maybe it's already. I doubt it's already. I think so. I, I, I think I think the first tech, the first square is the fast age, but that might, I can't remember if that's the Aphos Monastery or the Mountain Monastery. I, I think it is. I think it is research. It's like four hundred and fifty gold to, to research. I think is the price for it. Yeah. Um... But it's it's it's, it's a classic. De Civ gets a fast age option. <laughs> you you'd love you, to see it. You, you you see the pattern, right? You see the pattern. USA. Oh, the USA don't have a fast age option. Well, we can sort that one out. Yeah. But but the, but it's Virginia every every single game. Can we get can we get this card for every option? Okay, we'll do that. Oh shit. Okay. Every game of VGA. Hey, don't Lovely. be talking nonsense about um, my favourite civil, right? 
Oh yeah. But right, moving on. So so Kevin is almost two thirds aged. Um, it's now Unger's turn to go on defensive and do as much damage as possible. There is a four in the back. I mean, it's it's kind of like a strong outpost. Uh, TC fires there as well. Um, I mean, is he gonna uh, be able it, to do it, much it, damage? It's like it's like an it's like an aggro fort, but like it's still worse than an Aztec noble hut. If you kind of want to put like into like ranks of defensive buildings, so it's it's good, but it's not that good. And the thing is, Kevin still got no shipments. He got no TP, and he spent some extra shipments on the being an aggressive in age two, which is fair play. He spent a shipment on the um, Big Benny to age up, but uh, he hasn't really got that momentum. He hasn't got woods to upgrade into veteran units because he's got no cows to transform. And here comes Steel Bolts, and. If Ungus has really got steel bolts in, I think he's staying age three and just just playing it out from here. You don't have to always go age four; you can play in age three, and um, which makes sense. So Ungus's age four deck is is kind of geared towards late game age four instead of get an FI in there. So that's fair play. But uh, steel bolts is just going to be a bit brutal versus Kevin in the sense that. Uh, yeah, it makes Gas Kenyans completely useless, and then that opens the door for Order Hussars, which I did see a big batch being trained. Yeah, there's the Order Hussars. So what's Kevin's response here? I mean, the score's getting worse and worse for him. He needs a big pop, he needs some tempo somewhere. It looks like he's getting some um, elite... He's going, it's, he's, going, he's going Neft Tenures, and that, that, that's the right play here. He's, he should be able to outrange and out um, damage the crossbows while they're in this number. The Hussars are a bit of an issue, so he needs to keep the Gas Kenyans alive. The dragoons are just there, um, but it's just it's just the villagers now exposed at the back. He hasn't moved them around with the army, and that's there's a lot of units here at risk of getting to get cleaned. And he's lost five mills in the south. If he loses five in the north, he's down about 25 mills. And, and Malta with their settler wagon eco, their the core eco, their doesn't matter which resource they gather, it's pretty good, strong eco. Uh, it's just happy here for Ungers. He's in happy territory. Yeah, um, he, it's not looking good. I mean, he has lost a few villagers. Uh, he's now got absolutely zero map control. Uh, Neft Tenures, although decent skirms, it just feels like at this stage that the, the Malta death ball with the, the unpenetrable crossbowman with steel bolts is just going to absolutely smash everything down and just, just continues to just be so oppressive. Lots of Kevin in the background as well. I really don't know what Kevin has got here. Uh, yeah, it's not. It's just not looking good. I really like Ungers' uh, fully embrace of the consulate units. Oh no, not consulate, commandery base units here. The Royal Guard, Hust, the Royal Guard, Goon, and Crossbows. Nice little combo there. Um, you, you just at this point, you, you can just see why the ten, no, the nine Galachista Lancers and the commandery wagon ship in H3 is just such a power spike. And he just turns up. And you've got these really strong units. It's, it's only like a wood-based shipment, so it's quite easy to macro to get it on and then the immediate power spike of anti-infantry cavalry just charging down anything. Neftenia's wiped, Gaskenia's trade, but they could get picked off by the crossbows as well and then you left into show tails and it's not a lot of damage behind and even the Castor shipment pretty decent. It's like 13 Castors for 750 wood. It's it's actually I'm not a massive a, a... fan of that card, I have to say, but uh Nah but we like, if you age up then you've got well you've instantly got guard uh, yeah, cast. you don't true, have to spend an upgrade true. on Arbalester. It's just it's just one of those I used to play pure, um, pure consulate units into like very late game and start ticking to the crossbows. But I'm now a little bit of an early crossbow enjoyer. I love how there was just ten villagers there, all completely up for grabs, and uh, Ungus yeah, just yeah. allowed them to go into the uh, the TC, which will go down pretty damn quickly with these steel mm. bolts. So I think it's going to be go time for Kevin. And uh, what's he got here? Shotter warriors. He's going to need a lot of shotter warriors to do anything here. His explorer is about to come back as well. What's the plan here? It's, it's yeah, it's, it's like that Kevin's thinking that the crossbows here are the biggest threats to his army, but he just kind of he just tries to ignore that there's a whole bunch of goon cav as well. Like that's so much damage from those hussars, and the, the crossbows actually add a nice little impetus. Uh, should be a decent defense here from Kevin. Good trades, but the economy behind is just crawling away for Ungers because undisturbed eco with the court set of wagons. It just can't compare. Yeah, and I, uh, that looks like that was the last big fight, and there just wasn't enough stuff from Kevin, and there's the GG. Uh, really well played to both. It did look really good for Kevin at one point, 
But I think, you know, Unger's just got that really good pop. It was almost like an A's pop, if you will. There was lots of hazards that came out, and then there was the crossbow age up. So, mm -hmm. yeah, just really well planned by Unger's. He defended that commandary really, really well because he needed that to stay alive. Whilst, on the other hand, Kevin needed that to get taken down because it's a shipment point, and it just gave so much tempo. So, really well played. I liked the little cheeky fish boom here. I think he was getting a fishing boat per um, per shipment. But uh, it just unfortunately wasn't enough and he lost too many villagers. He couldn't get enough mass out and yeah, really well played to Ungers. Take a quick look at the villager count and uh, or while the villager population. Yeah, and it was very close at one point, but yeah, just, just... Well, it's not it's not though because it's it's 2.5 eco theory as well at that point. Like it's... And, and the thing is, you, with, with Ethiopia, you're kind of hoping for cattle to trade, and you're, you're constantly replenishing that cattle in the market, but mm. that, that never really came. So the economy just fell off a cliff there for um, Ethiopia. Yeah, and it just Unger's just pulling away and away and away, and uh, yeah, it showed in the amount of units that he had. It was close at one point, but yeah, I mean, maybe you need to be a bit more aggressive to Malta. I feel like he, he, he allowed Malta just to kind of play their own game all the way up until about seven or eight minutes and he really wasn't wasn't contested very hard and uh yeah unfortunately that just didn't pay off for him so uh really well played to Ungers. Yeah and... oh look we've got a mirror so Kevin had the opportunity to pick uh do the counter pick here and he's decided to go for his counter to Haudenosaunee is to pick Haudenosaunee himself and Kevin is renowned as being one of the best Howds, Howdenoshonis in the game. So, yeah, he's obviously very confident in this matchup then. Uh, yeah, so so this is going to remind me of something like an, like an EP patch 7, I think, time of just... It seemed like in the top patch 7, like the two main sieves were like France and Eero, and they both played r relatively the same. Eero slightly edging it out. And there was a time when Eero was like considered like one of the strongest sieves. I suppose that was on EP time, but also had a resurgence on DE as a very strong sieve at one point. And since then, their age one dock play has been nerfed by quite a bit. But uh, both players going for uh, age one docks, probably opening the same build order. And I expect a eco semi fast fortress from both players as well to the third age, honestly. So we'll have to strap ourselves in, tuck in, and see how this game develops. But uh, both players will be chopping wood in transition for some fishing boats, maybe four or five. I think it's a five vill card Eero have, or maybe it might be four vills. Send in your crates of resources, age up to the third age and play from there is what I'm expecting. Yeah, they do have five vills. Yeah. Uh, I, I just have to point out, um, I, I actually have to correct you for once, Harrison. You mentioned that Howard and Ashoni were a strong um, civilization on EP. Well, actually, there wasn't such a civilization called Haudenosaunee on EP, and they were oh, known as Iroquois. Dick, <laughs> so I, I had to get one on you. I had to get one on you. All right. You, 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 you know, occasionally I will drop the Eero word in casting as well. It's just a, <laughs> yeah. it's just a force of habit. It's just a, like a, it's a thing. But I feel that I remember. Every, I feel that every time I say the word Iroquois, but. Um, Somebody somewhere is going to cry that we're not being culturally appropriate. So uh, I have to admit, I, this is one thing I've always loved about Age of Empires. Like when I started my career in Age of Empires 2, like when I played when I was little, and it really like made me learn history because I didn't know what Haudenosaunee was or who they were. And when I f discovered that um, they were a civilization on DE, you know, I went, I did lots of research on the Haudenosaunee tribe and how it was pronounced and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, just a little thing there. I just thought that was really cool. That's, that, you know, that's another reason why I really love uh, Age of Empires because. You know, it just teaches people history and different cultures and different civilizations, which is <laughs> just a really cool added thing. We get to have fun and we get to learn at the same time, guys. Whoa. Um, but yes. Yeah, so. and, and, and then there are then there are some people who just install the um, old Eero voice um, dialogue <laughs> mod just so that it's back to RE voices. <laughs> they sound a little bit more chippier and chirpier. Sorry, I have to. I have to apologise to it. Yeah, I, they're not called Haudenosaunee apparently. In indeed, they're known as Haudenays. Um, Houdenays. Houdenays. Yeah. Houdenays. <laughs> Houdenays. Okay, so oh, yeah. let's have a look at the what's actually going on here. So three villagers. Uh, sorry, three fishing boats for each. That's obviously. Uh, oh no, four. I apologise. Um, well, certainly four coming out for Kevin. Are we going to see four 
for Ungers. Yes, we are. But he's a, he's about 10 seconds slower. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it can be the little differences like that. So, 19 vil age up for Ungers. And Kevin is also going to be doing a 9, 19 vil. Uh, Ungers is slightly quicker. Um, and Kevin just lagging behind. But he did get his uh, settler out quicker. So, yeah, uh, looks like it's pretty even Stevens right now. It's all going to be between uh, who gets a bit more fortunate in the treasure um, department. So... Ungers is in red. About... Oh, I think Kevin just about got it. Oh, 50 XP. Beautiful. In this downtime, I think we can have a conversation about cultural appropriation. I wonder who came up with the first idea of introducing, was it the fur trade pit or the fire fur marketplace, tribal marketplace, tribal pit, the tribal marketplace, the coin building. I wonder, like, the, so the, the, the guys will be sat in the office sipping their cups of coffee thinking, you know what, guys, I think we should do? I think we should, I think we should, uh, sell pelts instead of mining gold. And like, it's, it's interesting to see how that conversation starts off, because like, that's like a, it's like to, to somebody who played Age of Empires 3, you know, quite religiously, and most other people, like, that's just something you can never pr predict it. Like, you can predict Age of Empires DE coming out thinking, oh, this would be cool, new civs coming out, this might be happening, but nobody scouted this coming in, and it's just a... It's cool though. It gives yeah. it definitely gives um it definitely gives these native sieves a much more unique feel about them, and it definitely makes them feel more unique than they were. Uh, which I which I'm always really for. I know I like the unique differences between different types of civilizations. Um, so yeah, personally, I find just to just to have the small amount of wood to actually get the travel marketplace, I find it very frustrating. That's why I'm not a massive native uh, player myself. But uh, yeah, I really like it. I think it's a really cool change. Um, but we're getting into the nitty gritty now, and wow, that is a very aggressive war. Hurt. Oh no, sorry, I thought that was Kevin's war hurt. I do apologize. <laughs> that's a uh, that's nope, Unger's war hurt. <laughs> semi defensive taking. Just securing mid map control. Kevin going map control here. Both sending five hills, probably both then into uh, crates and looking to. I, I, I can't imagine we're going to see like a five a and a five tomahawk tomahawk big button into four Kanya push. It's just it just doesn't happen these days. No, I highly doubt. Even it. though they can, even though they can do a bloody good job of it, it just doesn't happen these days. It doesn't. And one thing to mention, like this uh, plague doctor actually has twenty four siege, which is slightly more than the actual uh, explorer itself. And even though they only fired a few uh, siege attacks off at this, uh, moment, no, no, it did surely, surely, damage. surely, surely, plague doctor because it's converted has a zero point one multiply versus buildings. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. I do apologize. Right, I got that right. Yeah. I, I was for a second. My thought. God, lion casting I know, knowledge. I know. Damn. Terrible of me. I, I I did think for a second. Wait, that sounds like that's a bit OP. But uh, yeah, that was uh, that's obviously the case. It does have a twelve hand attack. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Look, look, look at that tomahawk. There's like there's like one guy like full face. Oh no, because one one person was facing the wrong way. I thought one person was like orange and the other was like just like normal skin. Well, this look at the play a... doctor. It's chasing. It's chasing. Oh, but he's going to run into, he's gone pure musketeers, essentially, and uh, ran into some an -a there. Wait, wait, hold, hold on a minute, we, we've just walked ourselves into an H2 fight, what the hell? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you said it wasn't going to happen, but it looks like it I is going to happen. happen. I, 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 I didn't see it was going to happen. He's really taking it, it to him. It has to be defender's advantage, though, that's the thing, this is, this is why I'm finding it hard to believe this is to play, because both sieves have musk shipment, bow shipment can train musk bow, has bow as a musk big button, defensive tower, defensive Ooh. TC, like this is really hard territory to push and like Ungers is backing up, he's like I can't do this, I've got to back up. Yeah, and and especially is... in the mirror, I mean that war hut was just, just firing down on these ANs, it, it actually just killed one as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, oh. really great, def a great example of what the defender's advantage actually does. So we'll see what the what use these ANs can get out. But he's going to be really vulnerable to Cav right now. Looks like we've actually got a canoe on the uh, the bottom side of the map as well. And Unger's decided to build one. I think he's cost about 100 wood, yes. And uh, yeah, going to be a really, really annoying nuisance on the water with that one canoe. As long as it doesn't go down to dock fire, that's a really nice play there by Unger's. Who could knew about that one, eh? <laughs> very good, oh. very good. Seven I out of ten. You. Thank um, you, thank you. So and this was... this cab, by the way, like he he's had them out for a long time, but they he's really got no value out of this cab. He's essentially just run into a wall of tomahawks. So this cab just getting wilted down there as well, and really zero value out of that. Um, that's really nice catch for Kevin just by uh, essentially building the counter to it. Now got some cab of his own. I believe that would have come from the shipment. So yeah, I think I think Kevin sent was it six hundred woods to get the stable, then trained them naturally, and now is sending four cab. 
as a kind of like a um, push out type card. Like he's kind of gone this the better way in making better use of the crate shipments first, and then using the military shipments to kind of push out momentum. Whereas Unger's shipped in the cavalry first, try to get momentum with the military units, and now has only crate shipments to send, which takes a while to kind of eat up. Invest and then push out that momentum. And, and a huge power spike now. He's just built four, and the shipment of four has just come in with that five that he's got. He's now got 13 Canyon Horsemen. I think this is a perfect time to go and push it. And Ungers is going, he's going on the aggressive as well. And this, Ungers, this is not going to end well for you, I assure you. He does have some nice tree kind of uh, walls over here. The canoe being a nuisance over here again, but it's all about what's going to happen here. Uh -oh, and uh -oh, there's Ayana's on the right getting caught out. There's Ayana's in the front getting caught out. This is. Where's the war dance? This I always I always think like hero players always forget to put the mark the uh, war dance pit and start dancing for, for war. But this has got cleanup written all over it. Oh dear! God. And the cab are just going to come in and destroy everything. And you do not want tomahawks just in your face firing at those those tomahawks out there. <laughs> you do you do not want cab versus tomahawks in melee. Tomahawks are the strongest oh, anti cab in melee. They rip through cavalry. And this and is, that is going to be complete destruction. That's, and, that's oh, a wipeout. This it's is just a Ayana's left versus. Uh, Kanye West and uh, Kanye West going to do oh, what he does the best and just beautiful. clean up. <laughs> Wipe out. So uh, yeah, that that um that those two players not going to play in age two kind of uh, went out the window, didn't it? But I still stand <laughs> by my, I I still stand by my comment because I don't think that is the optimum way to play this matchup because of the um reasons mentioned, i.e. the shipments, the big buttons, the, the defensive buildings and all this. And you're, you're also playing with the same tools as well. So defense advantage is going to be so huge. And then Kevin defended and has gone for the counter punch and went for that kind of one-two knockout. Bam! Okay, there's Tomahawk, bit, Tomahawk shipment, but... It's just too late and yeah. there's not enough, unfortunately. These Cav are coming out as well, but yeah, Kevin's just got way too much Cav here. And I think that he's building more Ayena. And he, he's at that stage where it doesn't really matter what he builds. He's just gone for the wrong comp, I think. Um, Kevin's a man of my own heart and basically just gone must Cav. And Ungers has tried to be maybe too clever, and unfortunately, it's just really not paid off for him. Although, uh, there is more Cav coming in, but his army's quite weak now. There's a lot of Cav, uh, one here on 74 HP. Uh, maybe he's got enough to take take this down. It looks like he probably will just before more. Oh no, Tomahawks are going to come out. And if there's a really good pop with those Tomahawks, uh, that's gonna it's going to be really difficult for Kevin to take this down. Remember that this Warhut is firing the entire time. Oh, and more cab coming now here, as well. They should be fine. Um, I think some notes about Aeners. They do have a, they do fire at 1.5 and have double multipliers versus heavy infantry. So the Tomahawks will go down pretty quickly. Um, obviously, you know about infantry and fire rates, don't you, Line, <laughs> Mister? I, I thought crossbows and longbows fired at the same rate. <laughs> I have to say, uh, um, uh, that is a massive uh, shame that he didn't take that war down. It had about like, 300 HP on it, and it was doing 30 attack apiece, 45 to cap. So I would have really liked to seen him, even if it cost him his, his army, his entire army there, I feel like he could have taken that war hut down. And uh, that would have given him really good tempo. But he decided not to, and uh, yeah, it paid off for Ungers, so... That canoe looks like it has gone now, and uh, that canoe was being extremely frustrating. So maybe um, the dock made short work of it. We didn't see how it was taken down, but there's only three fishing boats available now, whilst uh, Unger still has his four. So maybe that canoe for 100 wood maybe got got some value out of it because it did deny um, the fishing boats some action as well. So uh, being able to gather that resource. So yeah, maybe that was a nice night. No, the canoe was a nice little uh, catch there. Um, scores have really bounced back for Ungers. Maybe it's maybe there's a, a going to be a spring for Kevin there as well, especially when this trading post gets built. It is the House of Vaza, so I I, I do feel like the uh, I have somewhat made uh, the Hanseatic League, which delivers four tort wagons, somewhat of a meta for most sieves, and that's one of the reasons I, I love this I, map so much because Vaza I don't, is on I there. don't think I don't think he's going for top, so I think he's just preparing for um, Winter Sars. I think uh, Kevin's yeah. going to the next stage and it's going to go straight to Winter Star production. He is macroing because uh, it's food and wood, so it does look like he I mean, is. I mean, he might, might be. He might, he might want to save up for like a. Well, he's only got one war. He's only got one stable. He's got two wars, actually. So he doesn't... I don't mean he's going to upgrade um, Tomahawks. So maybe he is. Yeah, maybe, maybe he's just going for the extra bit of eco. But 
I mean, well, you, I mean, you might as well. Four actually, if, it's essentially a four yeah, villager if, card. If you got it, you might as well for housing, because otherwise you're going to spend it on long houses as well, which are relatively efficient housing um, options. But I think it's just going to make make that. But I, he's still okay. Okay, you no, know, he needs. He still needs the wood for Kanya production and Kanya upgrades, because yeah, elite Kanya upgrades are so good. So good. So both are up now. Uh, we'll see what's going to happen. Oh, yeah, and that war hut's yeah, in a bad position. Yeah, this is smart. Because he knows he's got his first day shipment, elite canyons as well, before Unger's going to even get his elite canya, and he's just going to take down why he can. And Unger's is like, you caught me, man. You, you, this is a great timing, and he's going to get his rewards for it. Yeah, and those musket riders are just not going to come out quick enough to be able to deal with these uh, canyon horsemen. So that's a really, really nice push by Kevin. Absolutely perfect timing. And that's what separates the men from the boys. You know, it's all about timing and situational awareness. So uh, really well uh, well played by Kevin there. Um, he's just got uh, he's just got the bigger mass as well. And it looks like this uh, Coral, aka Stable, will be going down. Musket Riders are going to come out, but there are some decent skirms. Some Forest Prowlers, I think I can see there, yep, um, are in the mix there. So 2k score difference. Ungus is going to have to get a really good pop here, or he's going to have to... You know, pop a rabbit out of the bag somehow because, I mean, he hasn't even got anywhere to be able to build units from at this moment in time. So he's just, just stacking resources, which is just not what you want to be in this position. Houses are also going to be going down now. And if a couple of these get taken down, he doesn't have much wood and he's going to get housed. And that's just going to allow him to mean he's going to stack even more resources. So Unger's looking in a really bad position here. This is really nice play, really nice pressure by Kevin. Yeah, I haven't really got much else to say. I think I think uh, we're on that kind of um, on just on on the on the slowdown. The Kevin just securing his position. He wasn't going to dive in there, but it's one of those questions that you can't endlessly kite away from twenty-five Kanya horsemen with five musky riders. Eventually, they're going to get caught <laughs> and cut yeah. down. And his, even if goons are anti-cav, they just lose in melee once they are caught. So can't overly. Um, do it there and uh looks like we won't, we won't be seeing um winter sars it's just the torps but uh still a nice investment there onto the gold mine and the population kevin up to 140 population 119 um in play 140 space so he's actually got he's made use of the torps population space as well so it's, it's certainly a good investment in that situation and uh, try to push in with some cab by time be a bit annoying um it's really hard here for Ungus to outplay because because it's the same sieve in the mirror. It's really hard to get back in with the same tools, same upgrades, same strengths. Um, maybe he can try and go for a, uh, a massive fight with everyone on the fire pit at the same time. But uh, Kevin, again, he's just picking up some units. So Ungus picked up a vill and a house, but he's just lost like five cav. It's just, it's not the kind of little trades he needs to get back in. Meanwhile, Kevin waiting for like another shipment. He's actually spending resources very well. He's not floating much. His army's looking pretty good. His explorer's up at full HP as well. Buffing the entire army. He's gonna, he's gonna move in and focus down. Um, Unger's explorer is so gonna go down in three seconds. Three, two, oh, he's, he kept out of range, but you can see it's, it's been targeted very quickly. It's so important, mm -hmm. the um, war chief, and that's yep. probably gonna go down. Now that the gold pit is under threat, the eco stops, the production goes down, and yeah, war dances on here for Ungus. He's got to go for like a do or die push because there's not much else he can do for the time being. Canyons do lead to charge, um, but all the cavalry there from Kevin's just there waiting standby, and he's just trying to focus down the explorer as best as he can if he can find it. Oh, it's by the TP. Oh well. Yeah, so War Dance is on, and that's going to buff him by about 16 unit, uh, 16%. So it's do or die now for Ungers, and is that War Dance going to be enough? Cav on Cav action here. Musket Riders are firing from the background, but it, the Forest Prowlers will be, I imagine, microed onto these Musket Riders, and it's just just not enough stuff. I mean, Kevin has his own Musket Riders, and he has more of them. He has more Kanye West as well, and the Forest Prowlers are just... He, the, the bigger mass is just going to win, unfortunately. And like you said, his Chad, his Explorer, basically has full HP. Uh, whilst this is on 27 and like you said that's a really big deal and, and just the ability to soak that much HP and, and you know continue to give give the uh, the aura to the other units is just so massive in the mirror <laughs> someone in chat asking for Japan to be deleted <laughs> that is 
That is like the 1200 ELO dream, that is. Yeah. Uh, I would agree with that, for 1200 ELO. <laughs> and there's the but, GG. Uh, and uh, it went out with a bit of a bang, but Unger's just knowing he's just too far mm. behind. And uh, the war dance just unfortunately not going to be enough. He just didn't have anywhere near enough units that he needed to. Uh, he did make another canoe, which uh, I forgot to mention. And uh, looked like that might have cleared up a few things. But uh, yeah, really well played to uh, Kevin. Like I said, he clearly was very confident going into that matchup because... He, he was the loser of the last game, so he was able to counter pick Ungers. Ungers picked first, and uh, yeah, it was obviously just very confident in that matchup. I think that I think that definitely proves it. But Kevin is the second best player with the Eero Civilization, only beaten <laughs> by GG Revnak from the FPL oh, yeah, of clan. course, number one, the in number everything. one player of the of the scene at the moment, talented beyond belief, master <laughs> of all civilizations, and. Uh, yeah, really, well, very... really great game. Great game. Um, Kevin really showing his uh, superiority with the Haudenosaunee. Um, and it's not always easy, even if you're a, a main, like a, a Haudenosaunee main, it's not always easy to play the mirror matchup. Sometimes you can be very good with a civilization, but be quite bad in the mirror matchup. And it, it generally depends who's more greedier or who goes for the better build. So, yeah, really well played to Kevin there. Um, that, I believe... I can't believe how close. Every time I do something with Kevin, it always goes down to the wire. And um, I believe that makes things free free. So it's coming down to the absolute last game, guys. What a series. What a showdown. This Speaking of been. last map, what should we do for it? Should we do a poll? Do we do um, your pick, my pick? Yeah, I um, don't know. So Kevin has said, what's the next map? And he questioned well, mark Siberia. So in, in the chat, yeah, he said, question mark Siberia. I'm like, yeah, no, we're not having we're not having a vanilla map to end the series. Like, we've, we've taken a tour around from the wacky to the plain to the standard to the old to the new. Like, I don't, I don't know, but I... I mean, I guess that Siberia is like... Oh, I... The only, standard, the only standard, the only standard, the only standard map I think I can tolerate now is Kamchatka, in the sense of we're coming home to the SmackDown home map. But I think we can do better than Kamchatka. There must be something everybody wants to see. Well, I mean, Arctic Territories is cool, but I don't know how hype that is. Maybe more like 2008, 2009, but that was purely single player. Did not the concepts of multiplayer at that point did not. The first multiplayer game I ever played was Battlefield One or Battlefield Two on Xbox 360, mm. and the concept of me killing somebody. And somebody else on the other side of the world was going, oh, shit, just died. It just blew my mind. <laughs> I was, uh, me... mate, I was back in the day. I remember learning off the likes of Mr. Milo. That's how That's how far back um, I go. Mr. Milo was the shit back then. Anyways, uh, let's go on to the final game, ladies and gents. The absolute final game. What a series this has been for the £50 Smackdown. I couldn't have asked for a better series for the first ever Smackdown. So... I really hope this is something you guys are going to enjoy because I really would like to do more of these. Um, so the uh, brand new map, which is Caucasus, we obviously had the Dunes, the Eye, on the uh, the first map of the series. And then the last game of the series, so very fitting that we've got one of the new maps as well. And this is a really cool map, which we're going to see, I believe, on the ranked um, for both. You know, the, the, Obviously, this is going to be a fun team game map. This is obviously going to be on the standard pool as well. So, yeah, this is this is a really cool map. And, um, yeah, it has everything. You know, it has the TP option. It has a, a strong native option because they're European natives, which are all very, very strong. And it has the water options. It has two lakes. So it, it really... It's, it really gives you that kind of um, ability to have flexible build orders. And uh, you have to be, as an opponent, you also have to be very prepared for what your opponent can do. Because you can do absolutely everything on this map. So, yeah, uh, I really like this. Uh, we've got Kevin uh, spawning on the north of the map playing France. And we've got Ungers in the south playing as Germany. So, this is an absolute classic matchup. I've enjoyed this matchup since 2007. Since 2000, well, since the game came out, 2005, I've been watching this matchup and loving it. Um, I, To be honest with you, I don't know which Civ wins this. It's probably very, very even because they're both decent civilizations. So, uh, I can't wait to see what we're going to see here. What's your, what's your thoughts, Harrison? My thoughts is I need to correct you. You said that the map had two lakes, but I'm, I see two coastlines with an unbounded body of water, meaning it's two seas. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to have to. You enjoyed that, that didn't you? That's only because of the Howden and Shoney thing that I've got. Yeah. I've been sitting on that. That's the, the Iroquois, yeah. Where, I've been sat there waiting for your drivel to end so I can impart <laughs> my wisdom on that one. But uh, what I would say is that I. 
your excitement for watching a Germany versus France game kind of shows that nostalgia in this game is one of those, is a key feeding point among many of the community. I guess the new member, D members, they don't really care about nostalgia, but a lot of players like <laughs> watching a recorded game in this matchup is it is special. It does have that a bit more of a special feeling, a bit more of an interesting kind of like addiction than, than watching, let's say, Malta versus Hausa. Random scissors, I'll just I agree. off the top of my head. Um, but, you know, these these scissors have un undergone multiple changes. Um, I think that the... Uh, was it the Prince Selector? Or was it this ancient eight ASEAN regime from France? That's a... Now it's moved into age one. That's a pretty nutty card. We may see that being played. Probably not. It's not really much of a native map this is. And it's, and it's a pretty large map. And Kevin is likely to be more of a standard... Um, standard strat enjoyer but uh it's one of those matchups where you know that if you've won the match you can say i've won the map or the match because i've played well better strategy better unit control i've won the fight and i'm just thinking like even games like in the east e premier league two or three i remember like geeks was playing like germany and getting some big wins i think taking like a game of kaiser Klein, and i was like oh my god <laughs> look at this man playing well with a sieve and just like a there's a, there's always so many matchups between this uh, between the three sieves of England, uh, Germany and France in terms of that kind of wheel of matchups it's just it's uh, always so good to watch Ungus here desperately trying to click on a, the trading post he not nope, he's actually going to get this pass he's got good, good, good time in here he's not going to miss that it so it's quite nice obviously all skill no luck that is all skill that is time in that one <laughs> He has done his thorough map analysis and knows exactly when that's passing. It's going to be close, though. It's yeah, be really close. Very close. He's going to miss it. Ooh, I'm so is he, sorry. Is he? It depends. Oh, no. I think he is. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that is a, that's a massive shame. I mean. Oh, shit. Yeah, All hype is just killed. The thing is, as well, the <laughs> thing is, uh, uh, Kevin gets it gets hey! it there right at the top. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's just that's just uh, kind of rubbing uh, salt into the wound. But... Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll see if that how much impact that does. It was obviously going to slow him down somewhat. He doesn't have any of the new cards by the looks of it, so he hasn't got the. Uh, the oh, Pandors though, Pandors. He does have Pandors, oh, so that that's... could be really important in this matchup. I love, I love that they fixed the Pandors, so I don't feel because when it was five hundred gold, just I just didn't have my deck because it's just it's just clearly broken. Like, you did, like did, did, yeah, you, I... you don't you don't have to be a like. Uh, an 1800 you don't enjoy it to, to understand like oh it's a broken card like i mean everybody could see this but like, there were still some people who genuinely thought it was actually 500 gold on purpose <laughs> yeah I mean, and i'm like oh yeah i, I see people. what you're saying the, 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 the biggest problem that i find with pandora's is i don't actually like sending it as a shipment but i like adding in like literally only a handful so maybe two or three of them in a mixture of other skirmishers and i'll tell you why because the biggest issue is microing with them. It's very rare that you're just fighting skirmishers with skirmishers. There's normally cav in the way. There's normally uh, goons in the way or whatever's in the way. And it's very difficult to uh, very slight micro your skirmisher army and your pandors to attack their skirmishers. That's always the biggest problem with pandors. So although technically on paper the unit looks like a very good unit because it's basically an anti-skirmisher skirmisher... It's very difficult, often it's very difficult in, in real in a real sense, in a real game sense, to micro them to the best of their effectiveness. So that's the biggest problem with Pandors, and that's I think that's why you don't see that many Pandors in lots of games, because that's the you, biggest downfall to them. You've just you just embarrassed embarrassed yourself. You've basically admitted that you don't like micro. <laughs> and that has exposed you as a Musk Falcon Joyer. Like I mean I don't the, deny that I don't deny that, but uh what I said is definitely true about uh, Pandors. I like the unit, and like I said, I added, I like adding in a couple of them when I get the opportunity to. Uh, it's the same with Hadjuks, because they're the outlaw version of Pandors. I like adding in a couple of them, but only a couple, because it's the difference in Skirmisher Wars, but well, it, yeah. when it's not Skirmisher Wars, it, they, they're not very effective, and they're an expensive unit that doesn't actually add a lot of value. Well, yeah, Hadjuks are good now that they fixed the firing animation, so it actually works out really well. The only problem is you don't often see Skirms in age 2 for most civs. I say most civs, quotation marks. Uh, it'd probably be about like, two years' time. They all civ will have a Skirmisher in age 2, just, just, just the way it's going. Jokes, 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 ha ha, ha ha. Um... <laughs> But yeah, you, you could you could add Hadjux and H three on the outlaw combat um, technology from the things. So it's, so it's not in play. I, I think 
you won't you probably won't see um pan doors being shipped this game here from germany because of the free ulans that germany gets and the cavalry opening that germany's gone for here they always have a sizable mass of of cavalry on the force on the field so if actually having anti skirm skirms is not you, you might win the skirmisher war but you still got to deal with the rest and over investing in skirmishers at the expense of anti cav or cavalry is would be a very risky play there from um oh yeah from the germans point of view oh whatever maybe maybe I hear maybe not, it, yeah, but the, yeah. the, 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 thing, the thing is, you still want Jaegers because to deal with the Urlands, the French player will go goons, but uh, Jaegers Pandals is always the better option. Goons. Yeah. They, yeah. It, it's, yeah. So in this option, it probably would be, but uh, it gives it gives color, it gives options. I, I agree, um, I agree. Um, just to mention up here, there was there was a potential really good raid for Ungers, um, but I think he might have put all of his Ulans into a the same um, group, yeah. group yeah. and it yeah. kind of backed them all up, and he definitely could have killed one uh, French villager for free, maybe more. But uh, well, yeah, so a, yeah. a small mistake there for um, Ungers. I like this little scout. With, again, it's, it's something that you see all the time with France players. And uh, it's such an easy way to you know get essentially free scouting. If we look at this um, this scout and, and what it's actually providing, it's in stealth. Mm. And it, it provides so much value to him because he knows exactly what's coming and when. So yeah, it's, I, I, loved, I always love seeing yeah. this. Um, it's a really nice play by, by Kevin. A must cusp um, play here from Kevin. It's actually quite interesting to see them taking this into a bit of a prolonged colonial. Um, Kevin making double sonnets into must cusp is kind of questionable, unfortunately. Musketeers very happy to see doppels on the field. And um, okay, yes, the, the, the scout does get discovered, but managed to get out of the way. Kevin's just walking back, but I'm sh struggling to see where this army here of Ungers, what value is going to get. It, yes, it might trade with this army, but I feel that Kevin's on his way up now and you have got to get uh, five goons trained, five goon ships to kind of clean this up, whatever happens to the army. But yeah, five, training five adopts you. You kind of, you kind of force yourself to make a trade here to justify the actions of training them. But yes, yes, they do, they do counter Hussars very well, but uh, they must, yeah. they've, just, they've just got the value. It, crossbows is not enough here. Just eight crossbows is not enough. Yeah, eight crossbows, you're, you're right. You're not. But if the Dops can connect and get a really good position, especially with the Ulans, then it could potentially be really damaging for Kevin. However, like you said, you, you know, they're not very fast unit. He was trying to pull trick them. And this this is all about speed and this is all about timing. And I, it's, it's looking like you get a market down, you might get a house or two down, but... Is he gonna? Is he gonna get much more value other than that? He does need to be careful of these musketeers, by the way. I've noticed they keep getting stuck between this gold mine and the villagers. So he, that, again, that's oh, something yeah. that he does need to be careful. Of. The musketeers being able to connect on these expos is not what you want as Germany. The but like you said, when you've got that many, when you've got that many musketeers, it's very difficult. Drownage underscore AOE has gifted five subs to viewers. Wow, and we've just got Drownage has just gifted five subs. What an absolute legend, Drownage! You are a beast. Thank mm. you so so much. Uh, on on the last game as well. What a legend. Thank you. I can't thank yeah. you enough. Um, but yeah, no. So Kevin's in age three now. And now we've got the other. The opposite has happened. Ungers is now the one running away. And uh, goons are going to be out very soon. And I don't think he wants to push. He definitely he wants does, to wait. He does, though, because he's, he's taken into vet musketeers. He had 200 wood saved up. So he's got for a nice little power spike here. Goons will catch him across the map. But he doesn't actually need them here with the vet musketeer play. He might go for 1k woods here, uh, Kevin. Because he's not under pressure. He could... Send more units to try and like really stamp his military authority, but like a thousand wood that was that's housing, that's amalgamation, that's extra production, that's that's everything he needs just to kind of stabilize. Where Germany is forced into unit shipment here, he cannot go for a thousand woods. Maybe France sneaks in a second TC, I don't know, but a uh, couple colonial crossbows versus vet musks. Yeah, he might pick up one or two, but uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't be so scared. And the barracks goes down, and that buys again Kevin more time. So a crate shipment here from Kevin will play very, very well. And oh, yes, that gold mine being restricted. And again, this is the thing about playing German on these maps. You need to know your gold mines are. You need to get control of them. And at the moment, Ungers, he's got like 500 gold left. And that's it. That is literally it. And, and now the trouble. stable was down and the barracks was down. And I feel like he 
He needs to get a church up, to be honest, ASAP, because he knew he didn't have a shipment coming in when he aged up. And I feel like his only real option to turn this around is to ship Jaegers. I think he needs Jaegers at this point. Or even Black Riders. He just needs something and to turn yeah, this around. Hey, if you've got Black Riders, send Black Riders. You can't go Jaegers versus Must Cast because how bad Skirms do versus Hus. Like, mm. you, you need to fully micro your Skirms, which is very hard versus Must Cast due to how far advanced the cavalry are in front of the musketeer line. It's quite, a, you know, when people say like, oh, you just need to micro, sometimes, you know, clicking five, Jaeg six Jaegers onto a musketeer is not good micro because you just overkilled that musketeer by so much and you're not really getting that true value of that shipments you want. And the Black Rose can do a better job here. Yes, he's pushing out, but uh, Kevin's done so much damage. And I think Kevin did go for a crate shipment. That's why he's backing up. He hasn't got too many reinforcements is that a dock on the side being dropped down is that just some ford villages or housing oh it's just oh, a, it's house. Just a nice little house that's you got a, i got really a bit excited there my, my pp got a little bit excited but uh yeah i mean to be honest with you he like i said ungers is a better german player than me but i felt like if he could have got a shipment prioritized getting a shipment there he could have then uh kind of turned the tempo around with 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 one mercenary unit whether it's jaegers or it's black riders but you know he's getting war wagons out now i think that, that's obviously the right shout uh uh, he's still got a few dops there, you know, I hope they don't go to waste because they really haven't done much all game and, and uh, I hope we get to see some value out of them. I imagine Kevin is going to go for Skirmisher Goon comp here, but I don't see many Skirmishers. Oh wow, okay, so we've just got, is that is that eight um, curses it's, 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 out of nowhere? Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the five plus three timing. Wow, so you should, know, you should know the five plus three time in line. That, oh, that is course, like bread and course. butter. Of course, That's bread and butter. Of course. That is. of course, I know what that is. But it doesn't look like he's just diving in straight away. I mean, maybe he's going to try and maneuver. Maybe, maybe the trading post can come up to the Germans' rescue. Maybe they can suck in five crassiers at a time. <laughs> maybe. Uh, I don't know where these cab are going. Like, what, what's the idea behind this? Does he not, does he not feel comfortable diving in? I mean, there was a lot of anti cab there, so. Maybe that's his thinking. Yeah, he does need I... some skirmishers because he needs a way of dealing with these war wagons and dops. So with, with like the Crassier play, like it's quite nice to like go like Musk Crassier, like that's a, a Jack, that like, Musk Huss. Um, but you do need some sort of infantry to help because the thing is with what makes it strong is that the anti cav will move forward to block the heavy cavalry. They they have to, they're forced to. But skirmishers kill any of units which are anti cavalry, so that's heavy infantry or dragoons. So that's kind of like where. You see Kevin's like being a bit tentative, he wants to get some skirms in and maybe he'll try to do something else and be because he's now lost that infantry war, he can't pick up the Doppel Sonders and Dops will happily trade into Hussar Crassiers. They won't win because of the amount of units, but uh, versus his Vets Ulans as well, which are pretty much good versus hand cavalry. Massive fight here, Goons are running, the Goons having to run from the Doppels, so in the meantime the actual cavalry here from Germany getting a good exchange onto the French Crassiers. He's winning the cav fight! Germany wow. is winning the cab fight, and the Doppelsonners are still taking um, prisoners here. That is melting, and uh, the, the final fight might just just edge a little bit of the goons around the way. But no, Unger's just smashing in and cleaning that fight up because he had nothing to kill the Dops with. There was just no answer to Dops, and yeah. Jesus wow. Christ. That was actually a really great fight for Ungers. I actually can't <laughs> believe it was that. I thought the Kurs were just going to be able to hang on and the Goons would do enough damage to the cab, but it doesn't look like that's the case. And that was a 4k score difference. We do actually see the dock eventually go up, but I think that's going to be too little too late. I feel like if he used his villagers oh, there... Oh, and there's 10... There's 18 skirmishers there. Oh my... Oh, oof. That is oof. That man, is that a is. big turnaround out of absolutely oh. nowhere. Well, I mean... That's exactly what he wanted because his goons were running away from the uh, dots. But when the goons really should have been fighting the Ulans, like those seconds were crucial in that sense. And I think, I think Ungers there was whether he meant it or not. I'm sure he did. Was very smart to have the dots to target the the dragoons instead of the cavalry because he knew. Mm. But if the goons were not in the fight, he would win the cav fight because just. Um, Crassiers, they're, they're very tanky. They're, they're tanky cavalry, but they're not high damage outputs. But Ulans are high damage outputs, and they, they do... They're like, obviously, very, very weak versions of hack, Hackapels, like RE Hackapels, but they... Hackapels just dominate cav fights because how strong they are, and there's just not enough... How many Ulans there are yeah. out of absolutely yeah. nowhere, and this is and, and classic. The, and the thing classic. is, yeah, goons can't endlessly kite from Ulans as well, unless they're happy to give up other stuff like Vils. Vils coming for a desperate pull, but the Warwaggers, eight Warwaggers, that's a, that's a very enjoyable mass there as well and this is just 
the lap of honor there for Ungers. What a game that was. What, what a fight. Game. It was looking thought... so good for Kevin and then bang out of nowhere. Those dops, like I said, I hope we get to see some value out of them. We got some value out of those dops. Absolutely insane. Really, really well played. Well played to both players. What an absolute series that was. Oh, what a lovely thing to say. <laughs> it was absolutely, absolutely insane. The thought was coming out there. I feel like Kevin wanted to try and buy himself some time, uh, maybe do some booming on water, but it just wasn't it wasn't enough. And Ungers wasn't having any of it. Ungers being a very aggressive player, very good timing player. Yeah, absolutely brilliant player. And it just came down to whose micro was better and which units fell better. Are on the map and uh, yeah it, it went to Ungers that game and I feel like it could have gone to anyone at that point uh, it definitely was back and forth there at one point it was looking very good for Ungers and then it was looking good for Kevin and they were both running away from each other at one point and uh, yeah it was really really uh, really well played by both of them thank you to both of these guys uh, for playing and um, yeah um, what what's your thoughts on that Harrison I mean that was absolutely crazy um, yeah, Germany have always edged French in this matchup for a little while now, and it is the kind of the Ulan mass. It's sometimes you get to the stage of Ulan with Cav Combat. I don't know whether, whether Cav Combat was in play for that final fight or not, but it kind of felt like it was in play in just how strong those units were. It was. Maybe you can check. Yeah, it was in. Yeah, you, you can tell. At that point, you can tell that Cav Combat was in play, and that does actually make all the difference in that final fight. And quite often, um, Quite often, that is the, the, the difference there. Kevin hopping into chat. Hello, well done. You got clapped. Goodbye. Not good enough, mate. You're not good enough for that 50 quid. You need to keep practicing. You need Kevin, to practice harder. What? I, I, I can't. That was such a crazy game. It was looking good for Ungers at the beginning of the series, and then you came back, and I thought, I, I honestly thought that was your game. Um, but absolutely insane to both of you, Kevin and Ungers. Um, really, really well played. And, uh, and uh, yeah, Ungers takes the, uh, takes the big prize. It's best of seven, yeah. So that was the that was the last game, right? Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 ten past ten now. It is like I'm kind of glad it's end now because I wouldn't want to go. I wouldn't would be able to go on much longer in that sense. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, I can't believe it actually went <laughs> right down to the series. wire. It actually went down right to the wire. Um, absolutely insane. And let's just change the score there. So it's four three and. Um, yeah, absolutely insane. Uh, I'm definitely going to have Kevin back for doing this. Every time I do something with Kevin, it, it, it always turns into a crazy cast or crazy series. And uh, yeah, Kevin's definitely one of my favorite players to watch. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think we'll definitely have him back. Maybe even the next one uh, or Ungers. Um, we'll have to see um, who's up for it. But yeah, um, thank you to thank you to both the players. Um I'll, I'll speak to Ungers after and uh, get him to get my uh, get get my PayPal details and or get his get, PayPal get, get your wallet out, get your big boy wallet out, <laughs> get my PayPal blow off, monies out, blow or... off blow off the debit cards, you know, <laughs> fuck, all the Twitch monies, money. Twitch monies, and uh, yeah, uh, just as insane. Uh, I mean, I, my throat's almost going because that's almost three hours, uh, just over three hours of pure casting. Oh, uh, didums! I'm, oh. I'm not a pro like you, Harrison. Cry. I'm not used to it. A river.